And we are live with episode 155 of the Beastly Thoughts live show here on Twitch. And we are live with episode 150. And I forgot to mute the Twitch stream. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so you have to hear delivery. that twice. <laughs> See, if you go yeah. into this, you're guaranteed flawless delivery. Flawless. The tech side, I've got it just worked the fuck out. Hey, I mean, we've only oh, no this for a couple whatsoever. of years. <laughs> Nailed. In all fairness, though, we've there's been multiple iterations of the show. It's been called That's Beastly right. Thoughts for a long time, but I mean, it started off the first episode that we did together. We had a Skype call on our Xboxes <laughs> and then used, <laughs> used an Elgato to record it. <laughs> there was no lighting. Um, craziest no. thing I've ever done in my life. No. So, I mean, we're working through it. I, I think actually next week or the week, a- week after, it's going to be even different than it is this week. We're going to have uh, kind of a new format, and a, for visually anyway. I and, can't uh, wait. Some cool stuff to, to show off. And, yeah, and I, I ordered a new camera. I don't, I don't have to worry about this crappy camera anymore. I think I'm, gonna... I'm glad to hear that. You know, Beastly, I've been watching your YouTube videos, and I've been loving the stuff you're doing live in front of the camera. Like, I really like it. But that camera's got like a... De- display lag or something so it's a little yeah. distracted i'm yeah, glad to hear yeah. that you're gonna get a get a new camera That's c922 cool. the logitech it's the newest one it has uh, it removes backgrounds automatically and I, I watched some reviews on it doesn't matter where you are you could have a room full of people it'll remove people behind you i, I have a green screen so it's not really an issue but it's very yeah. clear it's 1080p 1080p uh, it, 60 frames per second too right 60 frames per second it's really really incredible and uh you know i've had some people in my youtube videos commenting about that camera said beastly i love your content but the camera is crappy man and i'm like okay it's time to pull the trigger on this thing and so i finally pulled it it'll be here by tuesday super excited it was logitech the c920 is like a twitch streamer a youtuber it's like it's part of the package you get a blue microphone you get a c920 and <laughs> you just go to town on and you're YouTube, good to go yeah. right uh, same on Twitch, but the C922 is like the newer version of the C920, and people are loving it. Watts has one. Miss 5000 Watts has one, and I think, it, nice. can it do 4K video? I don't, I, no, I don't think it can do 4K. No. It can do 60 frames per second, and uh, I know that that was really, really great. I watched a bunch of videos on that, and uh, the, the 1080p is awesome. So Usually That's it's Gary really- selling me shit. Now it's you too? What the fuck? I can't let him take all the I'm fucking glory. He's going to make you spend a lot of money. I've got it right here, so if you get the C922, you can look as, as fabulous as I do right here. So. Oh, Not man. Sponsor, that's, though, right? That's the Not Hold on. You know what? i got to get some bleach, because I don't know how I can do all this, but you look great. <laughs> you look Appreciate great, that. Gary. Appreciate that. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> I love you too, buddy. He's like, oh, Robbie, you're too young to get that joke. It's totally fine. Guys, welcome to episode 155, Beastly Thoughts Live, the E3 special. I know everybody out there is excited Woo! about what's going to be happening this year with E3. Everybody's coming out to show the new goodies, games, and gadgets. And in this episode, we're going to go through the gamut of what we expect to see at E3 this year. But before we do that, we've got to go through our traditional thing and find out what we've been playing. So, Mr. Gary, would you like to elaborate on what you've been playing this week? More than happy to, BC. Thank you very much. This week has been divided between two games, one portable, one console traditional. Uh, we're going to go through it at record pace because most of the BC Thoughts team, uh, excluding one very important rabbit, played this together, actually. So we can uh, we can have a kind of a group discussion. We did invite him, but he's, <laughs> yeah. he's far too he's far too Hollywood to, to spend time with the rest of us off of this show. So. Way Hollywood too famous rabbit. Now, you know? Hollywood <laughs> rabbit. Yeah, he's so famous for all of us. I just, yeah. They just didn't no invite me. They knew I sucked, so they didn't <laughs> want me on the team. Oh yeah, right, Briar. <laughs> to be, yeah. Okay. To be fair, we did we did want to win, so you know, <laughs> yeah. That's, no rabbit on this team. <laughs> uh, so it's um it's a free to play um Mohus or Moss, which is a multiplayer online hero shooter called Paladins. Um, wait, wait, by there's a there's now an acronym for this type of. <laughs> Moss. First time I'm hearing Never it too. Yeah, it, right. Yeah. Moss. That. That's awesome. Moss. M O H S. Because it's not a mobber. It kind of is traditionally a mobber, but in a first-person shooter genre. So, yeah. Multiplayer online hero shooter. So, so the, when is the first? What's what's the first Moss? Is it? To an extent, Overwatch could be categorized as the first Moss to popularize okay. the genre. But there's been others that that have been. Uh, previous to that so things wow. like global agenda but um this is made by high risk studios talking about global agendas they're the maker of smite global agenda and tribes ascend for the pc and um, games currently in early access or, or beta 
it kind of feels like a hybrid of League of Legends, Smite and Overwatch. Um, the gameplay is, is instantly accessible, uh, but with the free-to-play elements, you've got cards, runes and an item shop that adds depth uh, and complexity that's stripped back from Overwatch to keep it more mainstream friendly. Um, with it being a free-to-play game, there's always a concern that that type of a game is going to be pay to win. My takeaway from playing it for about 20 hours is that the heroes and cards can be earned at a very generous rate and purchased with either real cash or in-game currency, which supports the free-to-play model. So the heroes are not all unlocked from the get-go, like they are in Overwatch? No, they're not. No. No, so obviously Overwatch, you pay a $60 ticket price or $40, I don't know what it is now, and you'd expect the content to be fully there. This is very similar to League of Legends, which is why I mentioned it in that genre. In League's the most popular game in the world, uh, aside from Minecraft. Popular game on Twitch, then, that's a, a fair thing to say. And in that, you get a subset of heroes. And if you want to purchase more heroes, you buy them with real cash. There's, there's no way to, to do that except paying, you know, ponying up the dollars for them. Um, and that's obviously, you know, a, a model that people are familiar and comfortable with in this genre. The point that I wanted to make is that the game is incredibly fun to pick up and play with buddies, and there's no cash barrier to entry. You know, you, all three of us got in there and played together. In terms of what the cost is, to give you guys a, an accurate view, and then I'm going to pass over to Beastly, who I know has played the PS4 side of things. The season pass equivalent, which is unlocking all the characters today and all future characters, is $20. So that will get you every character that's in the game and every character they ever release indefinitely for $20, um, which I think is a very fair price for it you know it's not That's excessive extremely fair. Uh, and you can purchase boosters which give you a increased rate of xp and gold so increased progression rate for a rate of five dollars for a seven day booster or ten dollars for a month long booster so i really recommend it to anyone who enjoys the moss style of shooter so the overwatch style and wants to pick up and play something that has the instant gameplay of overwatch but with more complexity of something like League of Legends. Now, I've played the PC version predominantly, but I know that Beastly and Robbie um, have been playing some other variants of the PS4 and, and possibly Xbox versions. Uh, Beastly, do you want to take it away and tell me how you, how you feel? Real quick, I got a couple of questions, because since you've been playing the PC version and you've played the PS4 version, one of the problems I have with Overwatch is that uh, the game is fun, and I'm comparing Overwatch to this game for obvious reasons, but the the game seems fun, uh, but I don't like the way it feels on the PS4 at all. Like, so I, I don't really like playing Overwatch on the PS4 because I don't know. There's something about the aim. There's something about using a controller to aim that precisely in a game, and it doesn't seem to have like the aim assist of a Call of Duty or a or a uh, or a Destiny. So it just it seems a little more difficult and a little more imprecise. But on the PC with the mouse and keyboard, I, I actually love the game. So I was wondering, like, how does it feel on the PS4 as compared to Overwatch or, you know, on the PC as compared to Overwatch? Well, as some, well, Gary, if you'd like to answer first, you can. But uh, my thoughts on it are this. I'm not a, a traditional PC player. I have a gaming PC dated as it may be. But the game played fine on here. I actually played it in 4K and it ran smooth 60 frames per second. And even a person like myself playing with a mouse and keyboard, I found no issue with that precise aiming you speak of. It's incredible. Right. So Actually, with mouse and keyboard, I would imagine it's pretty precise. But how's it feel on the PS4? PS4 feels very similar to the experience that you have with Overwatch. It's 60 frames per second. There isn't a lot of uh, uh, issues, for me at least, uh, finding that precise aim because I'm used to playing Overwatch and the game feel feels very similar to that for me. So if a person is used to having that precise aim and not that much aim assist, the PS4 version or possibly the Xbox One version might give you more issue. But after playing this on PC, I can really now understand anyone who plays a game on the PC having an issue playing these types of games on a console because you really, it's always been kind of hard for me to really understand. But we sat and played this game for an hour or two on Friday night and just, you know, learning and figuring out exactly how to move around and how to navigate the world and shoot people and move back and forth and jump out of the way. It's incredible what you can do, you know, with a gaming mouse versus what you can with a controller. And, you know, if you're used to a controller, I tried to talk to my wife. I tried to talk her into playing it on her PC. I installed it on her PC. I said, it's great. She said, but I don't play on PCs. Can we just please play on the PS4s? And so we've been playing it, you know, since yesterday on the PS4s and having a, a ball with it. For me, the issue is this. Are you used to playing on the PC? If you're used to playing on the PC, you probably need to play it there. If you're used to playing it on a console, 
you're going to be playing against other people on the console who have the same degree of difficulty aiming that you're having. And for me, it feels very similar to games like Overwatch. I absolutely love this game. And in a lot of ways so far, I hate to say it, I actually like it a little bit more than Overwatch. It, mm-hmm. There's just Why is that? more There's more layers to the, the, the different things that you can do. There's so much tweak to this game. You can change the way your character plays. You can change so many aspects to the Is there like a skill and, tree? No, yeah, it's not so- skill tree. It's, it's you, if you want to explain the cards, you can, uh, Gary. You probably know a little bit more it. than I do. Go ahead. I'll run through it very, very briefly. Um, didn't know how deep we wanted to go in it, so I thought I'd touch. Talk on about that this game is amazing, and, and everybody needs to play it. It's incredible. It is super good. It really so is. In the same way that Overwatch has heroes that you pick that fulfill a role and have set skills, you get that in um, in Paladins. Mm-hmm. So you pick. Let's let's take um, something that everyone knows. So let's take Reinhardt because there's a direct equivalent over there, um, the tank equivalent. Mm-hmm. You'll have the, the shield you can drop down in front of you. You'll have a, a, a rush forward maneuver. They're always the same. They're always going to do the same function. But then you have five cards that you play. So if you're familiar with Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, where you draw cards from a deck, you can then um, customize your loadout with five cards. Now, those cards you lock at the start of the game, and the cards are visible to the enemy team, so they've got time to lock down their cards as well. So it's counter versus counter. And these cards can have significant effects on the way that your character plays. Things like, you know, 50% additional headshot damage after a body shot. Health regeneration. You know, know, real uniqueness to the the way it plays. You know, it'll Mm -hmm. turn an ability from a projectile. Do you have access to these cards all the time, or are they unlocked via, like, like, uh, opening boxes or yes where do you get these and are they so, one use per like do no. they go away after you the first them use? Forever. you keep you them have forever. them for it. yeah so they're that you get every single character that you unlock or you purchase or you have at the start has a set of five cards uh, five basic cards that are actually very functional and a lot of them you'll use indefinitely but if you want to supplement that with other flavor cards that play differently you do have to unlock them with either in-game currency or physical currency or earn them in chests being completely honest with you, it is a very, very generous system, and you don't find that you're scraping the barrel or playing for hours to get them. You know, you can purchase just at the start of it. They give you fifty thousand essence, which is currency, and you can yeah. probably buy fifteen cards with that. I'd say, if that's fair, guys. Yeah, which is, yeah. yeah, around sure. that. You know, yesterday, uh, actually, yesterday, Kate and I played for about two or three hours, and I was playing. I don't even know her name. I'm not Robbie, but the the bow using character, the young lady. I unlocked pretty much every card that she has. I bought another character. I unlocked every card, and that's when the game became fun to me. It's just so many different ways that you can that's do cool. things in this I like game. That. I mean, it really is incredible. She has, like, for instance, a, a, a bomb that she attaches to one of her arrows, and when she shoots it, it's an area of effect. You can use a card to make that area of effect grow larger, and at the bottom of each card, you can actually add to that card. So say, for instance, it gets 30% bigger. You have, what is it, 12 points you can use for your cards, yeah. Gary? Yeah. Uh, if you have five cards, it's only five points. You can actually upgrade each of those cards once, and then do another one two times, or you can upgrade one of those other cards seven times. Uh, you know, adding power or adding area of effect, and so it really—I don't think anyone on earth is going to play this game the exact same way. It's just yeah. really incredible. I mean, it's something I'm really just getting into. Gary kind of opened that door; he cracked it open for me Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't know really what to expect. You know, you hear that those yeah. words, the terrible words, free to play. You're like, oh God, what is this? Are they trying to be um, another? What is the uh, yeah, gets you kart racer worried, that we it? all love? Um, the the PS Sonic PS, Racing, not Sonic Racing. The the PlayStation Crash Bandicoot Plus. Racing. No, come on, no. <laughs> That's an right. old game. Oh wow. Mod Nations or whatever was it? No, oh, no, Mod no, Nation, no. of course. Mod Nation Racers. <laughs> Why Rock and Roll this? Racing. Rock and Roll Racing. Rocket League. Thanks, Briar. You <laughs> almost fucked me what? up. What? Damn it. <laughs> Rocket League. It was... it just, Rock you know, and Roll it was, Racing. It was right there, what? but it wasn't. Rocket League has always struck me as like a, a diamond in the rough type of situation. A game that's free to play, or at least it was. It was a free game on the launch that was just so rewarding and so giving, mm. and it was just a magical experience. I honestly got to say, after playing this game for the amount of hours I played it, this might be and probably is the best free-to-play game I've ever played in my life. It's extremely rewarding. All the characters you can unlock. You know, if you see a character, you see someone playing with that character, you want to try them. 
you can save up 5,000 points. Boom, you can go and buy that character. You can learn all their moves. You can unlock their cards. And you can pretty much play the way you want to play. It's so many more layers in a game like Overwatch because of the different ways and intricacies to the ways that you can change the way that your character is offensive versus defensive. You can add perks to the way that you regenerate health. Uh, you can, like, the, the character I play with, if you roll... She has this move where she can roll out of the way real quick. And if you pull out your arrow, the first shot does 400 damage versus the normal 100 if you use a particular card. There's just so many different things you can do. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask awesome. you guys a question. Do you, do you guys, it sounds like it's really fun. I think you've convinced me to download it for sure. You guys see yourself playing it in three months? I, no I mean, idea, to be honest. I, mean, yeah. see, I, I personally will. The, the reason that I think there is is that it has a ranked mode very mm -hmm. similar to Overwatch. And a lot of the... The, the parts the BC was explaining there, the complexities are really going to come into play when you move into that rank section. So we're still playing casual. Um, the game has the same mechanic that League of Legends has where it locks your character choices at the start. So you can't tinker all that stuff that we're talking about once the game's started. Mm -hmm. So you have to determine in the lobby what the other team's done to what you do. And then there's another element which really struck me, which is the League of Legends element, where it incentivizes you to play the objective and perform well as a team. So as you... There's four um, rounds per per match, uh, and at each end of each round, you get to spend money in the item shop. And the item shop, the only way you can build that currency is by performing well in the game. So the more time you spend on the objective, the more time you're healing if you're a healer or defending if you're a tank, you will earn a currency that you can then spend to either be more offensive, more defensive, more utility, more... And that really plays out that that's where it kind of becomes like chess in that if the other team are being really aggressive and offensive, well, if you put on heavy defensive use on the item shop, then you can actually break that offense and push back. And, you know, something like Overwatch just doesn't have that complexity. It's designed to be much more mass market and mainstream where yeah. you just switch character and everything else is done for you. That's it. That's your only choice is what character you're going to play. Absolutely. So it's like a Dota compared to or League of Legends is... Overwatch and Dota is this game. Paladins, yeah. So much yeah. more complex, much, much more complex. Hmm. And, and I, I did not expect that because I've never played a MOBA, Briar. You know, I'm a console gamer primarily. That's something I've always stayed away from. And when he started introducing these cards to me, I was looking at the screen like, what the hell are these for? And then when I started tinkering around with it, I was like, wow, there's so many levels to the way that you can play a game like this. Something that console gamers, at least in this genre, are not used to and it really struck me as like a big surprise i love this game uh, and and that's what we're playing you know i got lots of games here that i could be playing that i spent money on it. it it usually feels better to play games you pay money for but this game is a hell of a lot of fun i'm really enjoying it i can't believe it's just the beta it feels so you know at this point so complete and so refreshing and, and i gotta agree with you gary uh, i think this will be something i'll play for a long time i still play overwatch all the time uh, and uh, once, you know, I get to the point where I know exactly what I'm doing, what cards I'm going to use and how I'm going to tinker and play with these characters, it just seems more rewarding. It, it, you have to put more deliberate thought into the way you play this game. So I can probably guarantee I'll be playing it in three months. Gary, have you been playing it mainly with teams or mainly solo? Mainly solo. The first time I played as a team was with Beasley and Robbie. Um, we and, had a and blast. Ghost, yeah. uh, Ghost too. It was awesome. Well. It was really and fun. I'm only playing casual. So I'm not playing ranked. When I go into ranked, I'll probably start looking on Reddit for, for teams and people to play with. But I still feel like as long as you look at team composition that you've picked versus what the other team have picked, you make an intelligent choice because that's locked for the whole game. You can know that at least you, you stand a chance of playing because someone can't switch out and play something that counters you. You know, you, you've got your counters and, and other yeah. things. To me, like I said, it's it's going to make its money through selling skins and that's what they've been determined to say you know all the things that are high cash purchases things that are really expensive are your exotic skins exotic weapon skins mm -hmm. exotic emotes purely cosmetic kind of yeah, yeah they, they look great awesome. it the actually makes me want to buy them yeah the fundamental nuts and bolts which give you a power advantage are very very cheap to earn twenty dollars up front will get you all the characters like i said boosters five dollars for a week or ten dollars for a month I'd say if you have the capabilities to play this on PS4, Xbox, or PC, download it. You've got nothing to lose. It's free. You know, yeah, try it out. Paladins. Go. It's really good. And it just, it does that free-to-play thing so well. And even on my PC, I could run the game at max settings, and it mostly stays at 60 frames. Like, it runs on pretty much anything, so. And, and Briar, even my caveman laptop ran it at 4K <laughs> 60 with no issues, man. Couldn't believe wow. it. Couldn't believe uh, it. I don't know who to toss this to for the next because everybody else has been playing this game. <laughs> Who wants to I go can next quickly pitch in. 
Okay, go ahead, Robbie. I was just going to say, besides uh, Paladins, which I really do like, and I definitely want to play more of that game, it definitely surprised me how good it was. I've also been playing some more Call of Duty 4. I've been really enjoying the remastered nice. version. You know, just I'm really enjoying playing Call of Duty, and I think just my excitement has been renewed for Call of Duty World War Two. And is it so? Yeah, you think that's what it is? Is World, the World War Two announcement kind of got you like excited about Call of Duty again? So it really has. Yeah, and that, that boots on the ground feel. Turmoil? It's oh, like this game is so much more fun to me than Infinite Warfare, Black Ops Three. I just really don't love those games that much. But to me, this is just so much better. But anyways, yeah, that's what I've been playing. And Briar, I want to really, really hear about what you're doing this week because you have a very special game you're going to see. Isn't that right? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Briar, yeah. Fucking yeah. Awesome. Uh, I mean, I've talked about this before, but yeah, I'm going to see uh, I'm going to see Destiny 2 on Thursday. So I'm really excited about that. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Um, like get, get my hands out. I'll be able to actually play it too, which is amazing uh, to actually play destiny Two on Thursday. You'll be one of the first people in the world outside of Bungie and he's, to play he's it. going to have footage of it. Think oh, about man. that. I'm not sure about that. BC. <laughs> we'll see no! about that. Let's pray, man. Um, Let's pray. Get I'm going to do everything I can to get fun, footage, man. but we'll have to see. Um, But yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm also really excited about uh player unknown battleground. I know I talked about this last week, uh, but I, had my first experience playing uh, as a team yesterday. Uh, sat down after <laughs> after kind of a grueling morning. I thought I'd sit down for an hour or two and uh, hit Wilson up on uh, on Twitter, and we just sat down. I thought we'd play for an hour or two. It ended up being five and a half or six hours <laughs> worth of <laughs> worth of uh, player unknowns battlegrounds. And the whole time we're laughing, we're giggling, we're having a great time, we're yelling at the screen. Uh, but there's something about the gameplay loop in that game where you drop in, you have this initial burst of chaos, right? And if you survive it, then you go through this like 20 minute uh, like stretch of very calm, very deliberate, like looting and being careful and looking at windows before you approach buildings, just being very careful, very calm. And then suddenly ultra violence, right? And it's just like, what? <laughs> and it's it's so weird because you have that initial burst of probably violence unless you just happen to land somewhere nobody nobody else has landed uh but then kind of that slow and methodical thinking man's game which almost it it takes away your preparedness for that burst of the that final bit of violence that is it really it, it sets you up to it really is it's a fun gameplay loop over and over again again there's no game i've played recently that has me has me just hitting that one more game button so many times every time i play it you know i stop by to play i'll just play 20 minutes of pubg uh and then i end up sitting there for 2 hours 3 hours and playing with a teammate was a lot of fun but i i do like playing solo as well i I'm pissed off now because I completely for forgot. I've been so busy all week. I, I was supposed to buy it during the last seven days. I'll buy it this week. Uh, I want to play that. Every time you talk about it, it's like I feel like that, that feeling you, you get when you're in a haunted house, the hairs on the back of your neck stands up. You know it's a special yeah. experience. When you play uh, as solo, it almost feels like a horror game because you are you got the volume way up so you can hear footsteps or vehicles around you, and you're really just like super tense. You're going through buildings and – there could literally be a dude aiming a shotgun at any door you go through, right? So you're just absolutely on edge the entire time. <laughs> and then awesome. finally, there is a dude at that door that you just walked through. <laughs> you know, after the 30th or 40th door, there is a dude in there. Or you're just like, you're hauling ass across an open field, and you see that blue line coming to get you. You know, the bubble is getting smaller, and you have to get mm -hmm. to, the, to the safe zone. And all of a sudden, you start seeing, you know, you start hearing that whistle of shots getting fired at you. And you're like, oh, shit. And you're in the middle of a field. So you, you, <laughs> you know, That's you're, awesome, man. It, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. It's really fun. I had a blast with Wilson playing it yesterday. Uh, and I really look forward to playing with you guys if you end up jumping on. Hell, uh, yes. But it is. Have, it you, is, down. have you played with any of us yet in that, in that game? Or is it no, not yet. So Gar try to get Gary in. I uh, haven't, haven't been able to hook up with him yet, but uh, Robbie, I sent a video card so I could play with Robbie. Ooh, Robbie, you <laughs> just <laughs> fucked me up, Robbie. Tomorrow or Tuesday, so very you know, soon. I do, I do really want to play um, 
with you, bro, or with anyone, to be honest. I, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it today. I'll buy it when we get done with the show, I promise. And yeah. uh, whenever you guys want to get together and do it, I'm down. Because I've really – it's been like 200 years since we played the game together. And so me, Gary, and Robbie, when we played this Friday, I was like, <gasps> I haven't been here in years. I probably Friday, got yeah. time. I got probably time to play tomorrow night. But Tuesday night is going to be about packing. Wednesday is going to be a travel day and then hanging out with like the Destiny peeps over in L.A. And then Thursday, Thursday, yeah, Thursday is Destiny 2 day. And then Friday is probably Destiny 2 video day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, I'd, I'd love to, to play with someone because I burnt out on that game real quick. And I think I spoke about it, what, four weeks ago, was it? Yeah. When I first played it. And I probably put about 15, 20 hours in that one week just straight through. But I'm a very impatient guy, uh, almost like ADD levels. Of I feel like we're going to make a good team then, Gary, because I am That's impatient it. too. Like I can't – like I've tried to do that. Like I'll hang out in the attic of a building until yeah. like the circle gets smaller. It's not for me. I'd rather just go rushing in and – Take that shotgun blast to the face if that's what's in store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, fucking see, that's, thug, man. For me, it's the frenetic, fast-paced multiplayer games that I love. Mm -hmm. And I guess having a teammate there takes the edge off it because if I'm not shooting someone for 20 minutes, I'm, yeah. I'm hitting that X on the top right. You know, it, it's just how we're running. I feel but, like respectable. the way me and Wilson were playing is we were trying to jump down into areas that we knew would be somewhat contested uh, yeah. and then win that initial battle, right? Is like, you know... Because you can see, as you parachute down into wherever you're going to spawn in, you can see other people coming in. So you, you prepare mentally for that battle. And sometimes you got to do it fisticuffs. You know, sometimes yeah. you just got to knock a motherfucker out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, I've seen and there's a growing trend of um, nudity in that game as well. A lot of people are jumping in just in their uh, in their boxer briefs, aren't they? That's like yeah. a, a big thing. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, yeah. That's how I was playing yesterday. Murder is better in the nude, I think. Um, <laughs> so yesterday I was, this game now. me and Wilson are playing it and at one point we dropped down into this like kind of little horseshoe shaped military base and there's another team that's dropped in with us I drop in another guy is like following me into the same warehouse I pick up a frying pan and I'm trying to hit the guy with the frying pan and the other guy like does this like <laughs> Superman punch and like jacks me in the head and I'm crying out, Wilson, come save me, because Wilson had picked up a gun. Wilson comes running in, blasts the guy with a shotgun. Uh, it was It's just really exciting. It's just like these moment-to-moment, -moment, like super jolts of adrenaline that are so much fun. And then it's, it is, it does have these long periods of like there's not a whole lot of action. It's like, you know, you're talking about like, you know, I need a 4X scope. I'm looking for, you know, we're looking for this. Where should we go next? You know, yeah. we, we've got to run to the next location. But then when that sets up that adrenaline hit, right? It's like because you're not just like at this like static, this like level playing field of constant action, you have these dips in in like how much Inclined action too, yeah. but the highs are so high because there's so much on the line every time you get into a gunfight that it, it really is a lot of fun church boy <laughs> we have some we had some good times yesterday <laughs> what church boy <laughs> i was I sniping somebody at one point who's up in the bell tower of a church and I, all i had was like a smg <laughs> i'm just like pop pop <laughs> It was fun. It's a fun game. I'm really enjoying it. So let me ask you a question, Briar. I mean, as someone who's known PC gaming years ago and really kind of got into console gaming mm -hmm. more recently, a person like me, would it be easy for me to get good playing, you know, with mouse and keyboard, you know, after hours and hours and hours of playing? Because, you know, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old. Yeah. He's fucking, I feel like the rock man for the never ending story. These hands aren't made for this shit. Will I ever I'll tell get you, there? Easily, if I could have like the controller for the left hand side and the mouse for the right hand side, I think that would be the best option for me personally. Cause like my pinky gets tired from holding down shift for six hours at a time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like when I'm, when I, when I really, when shit is really hitting the fan and the adrenaline is high, like sometimes I hit R instead of F, you know, and it just, you know, I'm reloading my gun instead of opening a door and like yeah. shit just goes wrong because it's not ingrained into my, you know, my muscle memory like a controller is. But the mouse, aiming with a mouse is pretty fucking natural, I love it. right? It's yeah, like, I love it. you know, you yeah. just move around the mouse. But it's the keyboard for me that is a little on the wonky side. But 
I, I would think that after a while you get used to it. You know, it's just practice. Also, practice with anything. For sure. Yeah. I'd also yeah. say that PUBG is a unique <clears throat> beast in the same way that H1Z1 is. So even if you were to be good, I mean, I'd, I'd say I'm relatively acceptable at PC first-person shooters. I've played them for a long time. I am not very good at PUBG. There's, there's a, a unique way of aiming and moving, like because it's a third-person game, mm -hmm. um, that you can switch to first-person. A lot of the time, you'll just be shooting the scenery in front of you. Um, and it, there's a peculiar way of learning it. So I think you wouldn't be at a disadvantage by coming in cold because you're learning the game in the same way a lot of people are. So. It's a lot of fun. I, I would love to play with you guys at some point. It, it is my current addiction. Like we absolutely is. will. It really yeah, is. That, that's more motivating for me because I, I, you know, I actually bought this gaming PC because I wanted something to be able to do my videos and render on, but mm -hmm. also that was powerful enough to play what at the time I thought was my passion, which is DayZ. Uh, of course, it was able to destroy DayZ, but I had nobody to play with. And so I was kind of in there. I got my wife in there. We were walking around, figuring things out. And, of course, she gets pregnant and all, shit goes left. Now I got guys I can actually play a game with. So I'm excited yeah, It's about only that. 30 bucks, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm the beast of the game. $30 ain't shit. All right, so look. Um, I'm just kidding. I need $30. Send it to my PayPal. Uh, guys, <laughs> E3 2017. Exciting time. Uh, of course, Rob a Skull. We, the show would not exists without Robbie. I know a lot of you guys think he just sends us syrup through the mail. He's an incredible guy. He uh, well, he, he, like he puts he puts our news together, and he took a lot of time to put together our E3 predictions list, and he went through the gamut. I mean, it's so professional. You think that this guy was actually a professional. Uh, I, I saw it, and I was like, I don't even want to participate. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. But Robbie <laughs> put together this incredible uh, list of demands for all the co-hosts to put together. Well, okay, don't put it like that. I don't, and I don't Force and, and so he's put together this list it's of ideas. demands. And Robbie, it's your baby. Why don't you dive into how we're going to get this thing done, what we're going to talk about, and uh, we'll go through our predictions and our thoughts on what we're going to see at E3 2017. Absolutely, guys. There is an awful lot to break down because we are a little under a month from E3, which is unbelievable to say. It does not feel like it's that close, but so it fast. will be here before we know it. You, so you told us about this list, and I was like, isn't it a bit early for E3? No, it's not, is no, it? No, it's not. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. That's what I thought, too, Briar, initially. I was like, you know what? We could probably wait. I'm like, well, no, actually, it's like a month out. We should probably do it. So, yeah, there's multiple ways we can break this down. We could do it by conference. We could sort of just go all out. We could do the top five things we want to kind of see happen. What do you guys feel like we should kind of tackle on this? We need to tackle it as the way that you actually created the document, because if you don't, I'll be confused as hell. So let's all do right. the way that you actually laid it out. So one of the first things I want to get to is by conference, and I think the first one we should really discuss, because this is going to be important, is, of course, Microsoft's conference. We have Xbox Scorpio coming. We know a lot of first-party IPs we'd like to probably see announced. So let's start with Microsoft, guys, and let's each discuss what we think Xbox Scorpio is going to be named, what it's going to be priced, and when it's going to be released. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, I think... We want to start with name, right? Okay, the name yep. is going to be the Xbox Three. What? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> really you know, look at the way they uh, name stuff. The Xbox One is the third uh, Xbox, so oh, you know God. we're we're going in the right direction there. Windows Seven is like the eighth version of Windows, so you know I there is no rhyme or reason for why X Microsoft names shit. So I'm just taking a random shot in the dark, probably like what they're doing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that there's going to be two versions of the console sold. I think there's going to be a 399 version that is bare bones, comes with a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and there's going to be oh, a wow. 499 version that comes with a one terabyte drive and a pack in game, uh, something something along those lines. I think that I I, I think they are going to try and hit that 399 price point. Mm. Holy shit! I hope you're right. That's all I, I, can say. I, I wasn't brave enough to do that, Briar. Uh, and then I randomly threw a dart at a Tuesday in November and hit November 7th. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> wow. I just said mid-November, so we get the date out, out of the way, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to look at the calendar and, and do that. But I think that the new Xbox, I feel like if they throw a number out there, they're going to kind of confuse the market. Because if they call the Xbox 3, people are going to wonder where the Xbox 2 is at. Mm. I think they're going to call it something like... That was like the Xbox 360. 
<laughs> you just confused me right there. Okay, so I think that the name, and I talked to my wife about it, and of course she was feeding the baby. She didn't care. I think that a good name for the new Xbox, the Xbox Scorpio, yeah, would be would be the Xbox Infinity. I think that the Xbox That's Infinity the is the same name I had. I kid you not. Wow. I, I, hey man. There we go. That sounds yeah, like I'm, a smartphone. I, I'm, I might be your real father, Robbie. Who knows, man? It's all in the genes. Xbox <laughs> um, <shocked>. Infinity. <laughs> Xbox Infinity, I think that the name makes sense because of the uh, iterative change they're trying to bring to the console, saying that the Xbox Scorpio would kind of put an end to generational leaps, that yeah. they would be able to kind of bring this thing out every couple of years and ha- add iterative changes. Then, so I'm thinking, oh, then they can name the next one Xbox Infinity Plus One. Fucking oh beastly. God. I'm on board. I'm on board. Oh, <laughs> you, <man. laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sold. I'm going with Beasley's idea. <laughs> so I'm thinking that I, I, I didn't give too much thought to them uh, bringing out two versions of this, but I was thinking that the sweet spot that they could hit that would excite gamers and get people on board with this thing is $450. I think that you could easily ask for $50 more than the PS4 Pro for the extra hardware and the extra added power that's going to be packed into the box of this thing. I think that's a good price. I think it's four fifty. What's the price? I missed that. I was reading a comment. Four fifty. Four fifty. Okay. I think well, that's we'll a good it. sweet spot. I think they would still be losing money, uh, quite a bit of money for what they promise is going to be in this thing. But I think that's very competitive with the PS4 Pro, and of course, it'll destroy the PS4 Pro as far as the potential power of what they're able to do with third-party games. So, Xbox Infinity, mid-November, four hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Gary, what do you think? Damn. So. I think that it's going to be called the Xbox One X. Now, the Ooh, reason I, I think like that, that one the, too, because that could be Xbox Ten. It could. <laughs> well, this is insane. The Xbox, I didn't know we were at ten Xboxes. Unbelievable. I don't think that the Xbox One will exist anymore once it comes out. I think they'll pull a Sony and say it's now the Slim or the X. So you're going to have the Xbox One S or the X, which is you know the Slim or the the. So Pro, it'll be called whatever. Xbox oh, wow. X or Xbox One X. That's Xbox One smart. X. Okay. So wow. the Xbox One S or X, and that's the the two models that you've got there. Uh, I I agree with you, um, Briar. I think we're going to see a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and the reason for that is that all of these consoles are now compatible with external HDDs, and people, you know, console manufacturers are now comfortable with the fact that people can get a two terabyte hard drive very very cheaply, slap it in, have all their games on. You know, there's no reason to pack in a, a two and a half inch effectively laptop hard drive which is what they're doing in there which are expensive to do in the first place and pump up the initial purchase price so i think we're going to see 399 and another reason i think we're going to see that is it's going to put pressure on sony for the mistake that was the ps4 pro um and i wanted to get that point out there that i'd, I'd said it earlier in the week basically and i know you're a pony but in my opinion <laughs> i think the the ps4 pro is the only mistake that sony's made this generation and, and the reason for that is that with the slim sony would have put a huge price gulf between them and the scorpio sony didn't need the pro they already had the market they already had all the game franchises and they had the consumers so microsoft can have all the hardware they can let microsoft play a hardware game all they want but microsoft don't have any of the ips and games that people want so i don't know i think it makes it a more compelling proposition to say ps4 slim 249 or xbox you know Scorpio at 450 or whatever it is, but I think Microsoft to put pressure are going to do 399 and Ooh, date I've got. Be, that'd be amazing if they do, man. That's going to be shit storm sparks yeah. flying, Gary. Good so point. I've got se- September 1st, um, and the reason I think September? they're going to do that, really, yeah. So wow. I think they're going to bring it early rather than later, partly because I think they want to get out there before Destiny and any of the other big September launches. Now, Call of Duty might be later in the year, but if you don't have exclusive content, at least maybe you can throw the best possible hardware at these big games that launch. So I think they're going to look at September. Wow. I really like your ideas here. I like getting Me it too. out early. Um, mm. That sounds like a hot idea because you also then have all of those holiday releases going all the way through are selling your your console that's actually out as opposed to everybody just waiting for it to come out in november yeah because people I, I like it on the i like all there. of gary's answers mm-hmm. i feel like i want to retract mine and just slide into his pocket i do want to I, I just want to address one of the comments dc147 says that xbox one x is the most sensible name he's heard so far 
Well, yeah. clearly you don't understand how Microsoft names stuff then. <laughs> yeah. They're... If you think Sensible has something to do with it. <laughs> Probably where, was, where was 360 from? That was just madness. <laughs> Xbox you guys one, remember yeah. the joke, too, when uh, Xbox One came out? They said it's called Xbox One because Microsoft took 359 steps back with all that <laughs> online stuff. Yeah, with the DRM and all that. I remember that. Awesome. Robbie, what, what are your predictions here? All right, so just like Beastly, I also, for some reason, guessed it would be called Xbox Infinity, basically for the same reasons. Yeah. I do think it'll, unfortunately, it will cost four ninety nine. I just four ninety nine. I, I just see it with the power, you know, and all that, and I think it will come with a one terabyte hard drive, uh, probably to be released in late October. I just feel like they'll have a first party game that they'll launch on the same day as it. So I see late October as a release date for four ninety nine. I think if they release a console at four ninety nine. It's doomed. Yeah, it's murder. It's dead. It'll be a tough sell, but that's just what I feel like in my gut. Whether I want it or not, I feel like they're going to do it just because knowing how powerful it. that thing is. I know I'll buy it. Of just course, I'm, we'd you know, have to. I buy everything. And but- Gary will sell me if I don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, <you don't laughs> right. Don't make you buy one. <laughs> but the thing is, Robbie, you got to put yourself in the position of Microsoft. They're releasing a new console. They're far behind this generation. They've got to find a way to make it more attractive than the competition. The PS4 Pro is $400. Like you never know, right? They're going to take yeah. a loss either way. So why not just take the big loss, make this thing more attractive to consumers? If you got the, the Scorpios, the same price as the PS4 Pro, who's going to buy a PS4 Pro? Would you? I mean, only people who want exclusives only would buy it. My only uh, caveat to that point would be that Microsoft have targeted core publications to sell this. So they've gone to people like Digital Foundry, obviously Eurogamer. They've not gone to mass market. And that, you know, Phil's comments around this has been, this is a machine for enthusiasts. This isn't yeah. trying to be their mass market machine. I don't know if they're going to, pri- I hope it's going to be 399, but I don't know. Those you know, same enthusiasts though, right? Those same enthusiasts, they know that the PC is there, right? Yeah. And yeah. even though they've grown up, Maybe they, you know, they they've been Microsoft fanboys this whole time. You put something out there for five hundred bucks, and you see that you could build a pretty decent PC for five to seven hundred bucks. Yeah, that's a tough sell, in my opinion. You know, especially yeah. if you already have an Xbox One. That's, that's a, a real a tough hard sell. sell. I think it's a different situation. proposition. My my, we've been caught up on the PC versus Scorpio power for power argument for a long time, but it's been evidence that the Scorpio, the teraflops that it's got. They can do a lot more with the compute power than they can with an equivalent PC. You know, it's delivering, whether it's 4K, as they say, or true 4K, Mm -hmm. it's a different proposition to a PC that's a 4K PC. It's a different proposition, and it's one that nets you more games, and you don't actually lose anything. Because if you already are an Xbox One gamer, right, you have an Xbox One, and you're looking, maybe I want to spend $500 on an Xbox Scorpio, but for about the same amount of money, maybe, maybe more, maybe... 600 maybe 700 i can get pc get most of the first party games through this play you know anywhere program that microsoft is doing and get access to everything all that shit that i laugh hysterically to when you know my favorite youtuber plays on steam Mm -hmm. you know that's a that's i think it's a tough sell at 500 bucks i really do even to enthusiasts (laughs) yeah that's just my gut feeling though yeah i hear you All right, so moving on, Robbie, what is the next category? All right, so one thing I'm wondering is what do they open this conference with? What do you guys think they could open it with, whether it's a game or do you think Scorpio will be right off the bat? What do you guys think? I don't don't think that Microsoft will open with a Scorpio. I think they're going to open with something like their new pirate game. What is it? Um, Sea of Thieves. Thieves. Sea of Thieves. They're going to show a video game. I think they want to close with something big. Uh, which is the Xbox Scorpio, in my opinion. I would want to go out with a bang. They know they're going to be a day before Sony's conference, and they need to go out with something memorable. If they come out first with the Scorpio and then make misses after the Scorpio in games that people aren't excited about, that's what people are going to remember the most. They need I, mean, to I disagree. In- let, me, I disagree let me hear your completely. thoughts. The reason that I disagree with that is that if you go out with the Scorpio first, then every single game you show can be Scorpio footage. You can't show the footage mm. first and then release the console. If you want to show 4K footage or show it plays best on Scorpio, you've got to show the console first. If not, you've just teased the reveal. I You're agree with Gary right, here. I, yeah. I, I, I imagine them opening me, up. I, I imagine them open up. Microsoft open up, opens up their press conference 
with a game trailer of a new new game that we've never seen before. Yep. And at the end, you know, it says whatever their branding is going to be for enhanced on Xbox Scorpio, because I'm sure they'll have like some specific branding. At the end of that, it'll be there. And then they go ahead and announce like the first words out of their mouth, you know, is going ahead and announcing the Scorpio. And then the rest of the conferences show in the software that's going to be playable on the Scorpio. Totally, totally agree there, Gary. You completely did the Jedi thing on me again. It just makes sense, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder if I don't even know if Scorpio would be like the single first thing we see, like right away before even a game announcement. I feel like I think it probably would be a game first. Yeah, yeah. They do the game. Well, and it, then at it, the it, end it, of the it, game, it, it shows like you know that whatever the Scorpio it's branding is going to be. I think yeah, they discuss Scorpio so right at the start, though. Definitely, like they get all the details. Here's the price. Here's the name. Here's when it's coming. That's out. like I think, a, yeah. It's it's kind of like a double whammy or a triple whammy type of experience, Brad. Mm-hmm. Because if you show a game that, of course, you know is not being played on a PS4 powered console that looks incredible, it's running smooth. You're like, oh my god, what is this? Oh, this is the new uh, Kotor or something insane, right? And then after that, they say. Only playable or enhanced on the Xbox Pause, the new name of the console, boom, that's a second hit. And mm-hmm. then somebody comes out, you know, Andrew House type with hands and starts talking about the new Xbox, I mean, whatever they call it. That's a triple they, win. Super what exciting. If they sandwich the entire press conference on the release of the Scorpio. So, like you guys have said, you go out and you drop that great footage and you say enhanced by Scorpio. And then you continue to show great stuff that's enhanced by it all the way through. Game, 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 game. People go, yeah. whoa, what's this thing? Oh, it's amazing. It looks great. And as you get to the end, once you've closed off, just before the last big hit game, that's when you do your how much it costs, all the details, when's it coming out, and then you close off with your big hitter, whatever your final game's going to be. Six. That It's not going to be there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's yeah, really not going to be there? It's out. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. That just broke the other day in the news that That's it's not going to be there. That's bad news for Microsoft. <laughs> but Microsoft have said that there's going to be a ton of new and returning IPs. So I was racking my head as to what it could be. I know we've said Fable, but Fable could have a reboot. Gears 5 could easily be teased. Something like an Age of Empires or oh, Age really? of Empires reboot. really? I think that's way too soon. Gears 5. Perfect Dark, Goldeneye, any of the old yeah. rare games that they had, you know, could be could be coming through. There's a lot of things that they could pull. There's still a lot of um, Rare Replay yes. was on the Xbox One, which yeah, was like, rare. a load of it. And, yeah. and another thing, Gary, if they come out and show all these amazing games they're playing on the Xbox Scorpio, at the end of the conference, before they announce the price, they could also have a little uh, bit of information on the screen saying they're all playable on the Xbox One. So people who see these amazing games, they might look mm-hmm. better on the Scorpio, and it makes people feel included. Nobody's kind of left behind who has the Xbox One as well. So uh, I think yeah, it Another way sense. I could see this going, too, is if they the first five minutes of the press conference is all about, you know, here's how good the Xbox brand has been doing. The Xbox One S has been selling like gangbusters. People love the Blu-ray. People love the redesign. You know, all these games that have come out, you know, in the last year and these games that are coming out this year. And then going, you know, building on the brand, building on the strength of the Xbox One, then they move over to Scorpio. I can see them doing that too. It's difficult as well, which they've learned from Sony, to show 4K footage at E3. That's it's horrible. very, very it difficult. I, would, I wouldn't even really try. So, so bad. I know that Phil has spoken about the capability to enhance original games. So maybe we see a lot of 60 frames per second versions of big Xbox hits. Mm. You know, things yeah. on there which are you know, trying to sell it. There, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know how you're going to show a 4K machine Microsoft in a live stream. needs to show games. That's their thing, man. Like... Everybody's looking forward to seeing the new console, but they gotta show games. They gotta they have show to have that, that over the last two years, since Phil Spencer's been in charge, that they have been building first and second party, you know, connections and getting those yeah. games built. And they're coming out either this year or next year. Like they've got to show a lot of games, and they have gotta be exclusives. Yeah, completely agree. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's our thoughts on the Xbox conference, or at least what they're going to start and end with. Robbie, what's the next category? Well, we've covered Xbox Scorpio, and uh, if you guys have any other sort of predictions for that specific conference, we can go. I have one I'd like to talk about, because I think a AAA original IP will be announced built from the ground up for Scorpio in mind. No release date will be given. It will be a third-person action title that could fill the void of Scalebound. 
And I also think that's how they will close the conference. You think so? It's going to be a new IP that they close brand on? brand new. Yeah, it'll be. I think it'll fill that void that Scalebound had. I think it will be sort of a third person action IP. Mm -hmm. I don't know who from, but I think they're going to beats have brown it. branding is coming back. They're just moving into a different game. I don't know, Robbie. That seems like it's a scary proposition to start, the, or at least having this kind of conference after all the talk from Phil Spencer and the Xbox team about every Xbox game working on the Scorpio and really no exclusive titles. I thought they would. I think that personally, it'd be a smarter move for them to announce something like, like that later on in the Scorpio's life cycle. But my thoughts, something that I think that we could possibly see at E3 2017, is the Xbox Scorpio VR announcement. We know that this console. Mm is going to be capable of running VR. Uh, it's probably not going to be proprietary hardware, but it possibly could. Who knows? Sony Maybe. has their own. They have their own as well. Uh, we know that Xbox has been working very close with the Oculus Rift. Um, their mm -hmm. Xbox One Acer, controller. They've also been working with Acer. And yeah, so they, I'm going to say on that, what, what Bryce, I actually think we're not going to see VR for the Scorpio whatsoever. Ooh. And the reason that I don't think we're going to see it is this week there was a conference that Microsoft attended and they released their entire strategy for augmented reality and mixed reality for for the next year and all the headsets that they're bringing out and how it's much more mm -hmm. affordable hardware. And they see that that is where the market is moving, at least populous market. It's a lot easier to deliver. It's a lot more accessible. It's something that people can see and feel because it's done in a, in a real world environment. There's a lot less kit and hardware. You don't need it. Sensors everywhere. Augmented reality or mixed reality, I think, could be the selling point and the uniqueness that they try to push out with the Scorpio. So I think we're not going to see VR. I think we're going to see AR. Really? So you think we're going to see a step MR. back on it. Okay. I mean, it's, it's very, I'd very possible. I'd be surprised about that. I mean, they... Th They've shown off new uh, like motion controllers for a that they're working in conjunction with Acer. That's maybe PC, it may be Xbox. I would they see the success of Sony VR. Sony VR is selling like hotcakes. I mm -hmm. you know I wouldn't be surprised to see Xbox at least have a solution for VR in the works. Like they'll they'll talk about something for VR. Yeah, maybe it I is AR. Maybe maybe it is AR, but they're gonna have something either AR or VR associated. With the Scorpio. Okay. All right. All right, Robbie, what do we got next? Yeah. So another prediction I think will happen at Microsoft's conference, just because I have this feeling, is that Gearbox Software, a developer I really like, and I know that they've been working on Borderlands 3 for a long time, I think it's going to be announced at this conference, and I think we're going to get a 2018 release date. Because they've we, said we're Borderlands 3 is... Every Every prediction now, or not not Microsoft anymore? No, by conference. I like, mean, this is just what I think is going to happen at Microsoft's. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a great possibility. I'd love to see that. Uh, I thought, well, because, so are we going on to the Sony conference? Well, do you conference? guys have other predictions for Microsoft? If you do, we're kind of going I feel like them. I've talked <laughs> Microsoft off. Yeah, I, I think we, <laughs> we, just, we right. just ended Microsoft with the VR pronouncement. Uh, would you like, you guys like to move on to the Sony yeah, for sure. sure. We'll go Sony, okay. and then we'll go Nintendo, and then we'll move on to third party. So for Sony's conference, my first prediction is that Sucker Punch's new IP will be announced, and it will be called the Sentinel, just based on because they had a trademark they filed a long time ago for a game. It's still never been used. I think that's what it'll be called. It will not be an open world game like the Infamous series, but it will be a third person action game set in a dystopian future controlled by cybernetic humans. No release will be announced, and this will open the conference. Wow. I know it's a lot, but I just totally speculated like crazy yeah, on that yeah, one. That was 100% speculation. It was awesome. Yeah. You know, you, you said it with conviction. That's what matters the most. Hell yeah. Uh, so, Briar, Gary, what are you guys' thoughts? What do you guys think you'll see at the Sony conference? I think we're okay. going to see Destiny 2. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. He had to say That's it first. Obvious. I mean, gen generically, I think we're going to see a small amount of time devoted to the pro. And that's to define what the hell it is and what's it meant to do. Because I think they missed the first swing at that completely. Uh, I've already said I think the Pro was a misstep in the first place, and I think they need to do damage control at this E3, especially with the Scorpio being at the same conference. Mm. So I think there needs to be... I don't know what that message is. Uh, I don't know how they they solve that, but there needs to be some sort of damage control on the Pro to, to define it. And then I think we're going to see the same thing Sony have done year on year for the past three or four years, which is just games, game, 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 games, game, games, 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 games. Knock them out. They... 
they they do that and they have so much success with it because you 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 you're done with that conference and you feel bewildered by everything you saw. You know, like yeah. it's just you feel like you have vertigo or something. Like ah, oh. <laughs> very effective way of doing it. You know, uh, yeah. So I, I've got um, a theory on on how I think Sony might address the um, the PS4 Pro mm-hmm. debacle. And, and try to differentiate you think it's a themselves. debacle. A debacle. I think it is. I'm going to say debacle. <laughs> a debacle. Wow. I mean, I'm an owner of the Pro. And yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I couldn't care less. I, uh-huh. It's under a, my desk. Do you have it hooked up to a 4K TV? I've got it on a 4K monitor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it doesn't look as good as 4K PC. It doesn't no, look much better. No, of course not. Than, than, not mirror the power of a 1080. And it doesn't look much better than 1080p games. Uh, if I'm honest with you, if you took it away and gave me a slim under there and and hit it away and didn't tell me, I probably wouldn't tell the difference. Uh, it, I don't know. Well, to me, it's it's just not the general generational leap that I thought it was going to be. And I think that the way that they can potentially differentiate themselves, and and this is going to sound a little bit biased, um, is potentially look at a Vita hardware refresh. Now, hear me out on this one. Gosh, the reason that I think crazy. this would happen. <laughs> Not a Vita 2. You're so crazy for <laughs> thinking this, this that. True, right? <laughs> Not a Vita 2, but okay. Sony are still imposing on every developer that brings a game out on the PS4 that it has to be remote play compatible. They're asking developers to invest time and resource into remote play compatibility, and yeah. they're killing remote play as a platform. You can now remote play your PlayStation 4 on a PC or a mm-hmm. tablet or a mm. small phone. What's the use? I'm not going to get up from my PlayStation, move to my PC. That's not remote play. That's not play anywhere. That's just moving from one part of the room to another room in the house. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to play it on a tablet. There's no real use there. The Vita yep. was a remote play machine, but it was let down by a couple of factors, one being the storage space on it and two being the lack of physical buttons. My thing here is that we're going to see, now that it's got a strong library of games and the remote play is something that Microsoft don't have, we're going to see a Vita refresh with R2, L2 buttons and clickable sticks, maybe a modified body and SD card slot in there, which is just, you know, the Vita, the, the definitive Vita. Nintendo have been refreshing their hardware year on year and reselling I, I it to us. I love this idea. Oh, There's man, a, I think I the tried. difference between Nintendo refreshing their hardware and the Vita getting a refresh is that Nintendo sells 3DSs like they're fucking yeah. candy at a fat kid convention. <laughs> this is like <laughs> the Vita. Got a good point, the bro. Vita is the vegetables at the same convention. It's just like nobody <laughs> wants this fucking thing. <laughs> but could that be because Vita was sold as a proprietary piece of hardware rather than a complementary accessory? You know, for this, this is you get access to the Vita library. I mean, they but sold it even in the one. early marketing. They sh- they showed it being oh, used stupid. as like a rear view mirror at in in uh, you know a driving game, or they showed it be- using the remote play feature right off the they bat. They market it. They yeah. marketed it as part of that, but functionally, I don't feel like it really worked well for that. You know, the remote play maybe maybe on your Wi-Fi network it works great. For me, it works pretty. It's pretty iffy unless I'm like yeah. really close. That's interesting because it seems I have no issues with that myself, even on long I distance. A, so. I have a pretty good router, but I have a large house too. So mm. my 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 PS4 is wired to the router. Depending on where I am in the house, the the Vita remote play it support or the Vita remote play just doesn't work that well. It's very laggy mm. and you know dropping frames everywhere. I, I, it's I interesting. It's, I just... it's it's kind of subjective, right? I mean, I I tried it last week quite a bit in the house and i had pretty good success with it actually i took it to work last week and was playing my ps4 from there and it was really shitty so i mean i guess it all depends on how you're playing it here in the house my house is pretty big uh i haven't had too many issues doing it but that's the issue with it you know if i'm at home and i'm sitting in a house and i got 10 tvs and i'm on my vita playing my ps4 i'm like yeah what's the point in doing this i'm just going to play here because if i take it to work it's not really going to work too well yeah, and if, so, you know, if I the, if I lived in my old house, which was much smaller, and you know, I had a tri-band router, you know, a five hundred dollar uh, Wi-Fi router, like in the middle of the house, I bet it works great. But in the current house, like, there are other considerations between besides how good my Wi-Fi is. <laughs> One of those right. is my and wife's right. wife my kids, wife's wife definition of aesthetics. Aesthetics, and that Wi-Fi router just can't be, you know, <laughs> yeah. right in the middle of the where where it would work the best. It just can't be there. 
that's just my that was my only uh, thought that they're going to do something different because Microsoft have got Smart Glass, which yeah. is not remote play, and the Switch no, yeah. is true remote play. You know that is really take it anywhere. And Sony have got a kind of halfway house that they're just not not supporting at the moment in the way that they could, um, which is odd because the software they're still forcing developers to support it, but just not having the hardware there to do so. So that was just. I, I would, I'm- I would love for that to happen, Gary. I would love to see a new iteration of the, the Vita, a new hardware moving in that direction, or at least the next generation of it. The Vita is, what, seven years old? It's really old. It's been out for a long time, and it still works with modern technology, and it still seems it still to be a modern... still looks good. Like, the yeah. games on it still look good, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, w- I would love to see it. I just feel like in, in order for somebody to have, you know, at least to partic- uh, precipitate that idea, the Vita needed to be more of a success, and I just feel like it didn't reach the level of success that Sony usually grants, you know, we're going to do more for it. I, I feel like it kind of failed in, in the eyes of Sony, and that's my thoughts. I mean, I would love to see a new Vita, but I feel like the console in general didn't do well enough for Sony to reward it by creating more, especially with the misstep in the way that they marketed the, the system. Yeah. The way Robbie set up the list uh, for the show was the top five things we hope to see happen and the top yeah, five things we think will see happen. Completely, completely I wonder, different. Gary, where is this in your list? Is it something you hope will see happen or is it something you actually think will see happen? Yeah, is this really going to happen? So this is a hope. It's not a wild card prediction, though, because I, okay. I feel like it's, if if you had to put money on it, uh, I'd say there's probably like a, a 30 to 40% chance of this happening. It, I don't think it's a surefire thing, but I, I do think that there is still a chance of it because it it's something that sony has as a unique selling point that they're not exploiting that microsoft couldn't contest so it's something that i think that they could could have that the you know the ps4 pro is going to be overshadowed by the scorpio what are you going to do aside from software to show that playstation is still a strong brand for every gamer so that was so nothing. Briar, you just mentioned something interesting because robbie completely flipped on the, the way that he created this document it's i want to go been very hard wanna, to follow along so far <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. Let's start from where I knew this would happen, to be honest. Jesus Christ. Anyway, look, let's start. I, I got fine. a few things written down, the stuff that I would like to see, not the stuff that I think yeah, we will see. Let's go through that stuff. The, All right. So the kind of the hopeful I, future. It, it, we don't necessarily believe this is going to happen, right? We just but we really, to. really like to see it happen. <laughs> let's do that one. So, okay, my very first one was the Xbox Scorpio price at $450. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of people say $500. That's your hope. That's not what you believe. Yeah. That's my hope, uh-huh. you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's a it's a very tangible reality, you know. I got five kids. I can't I can't spend more than that on another system. Uh, that was my first hope. I'm thinking more realist realistically that it's probably going to be five hundred dollars, just based on the hardware that's inside the box and pundits and people who know more about PCs and GPUs and CPUs than I do. The stuff that's been said out in the world about what's in this thing. Uh, another thing that I I uh, would like to you know, hope to see would be Final Fantasy the remake release date revealed and a demo released at E3. Now, Ooh. chances are this probably won't happen. At least one of them won't happen. I think we're going to get some news about Final Fantasy the remake at E3 this year. But the the possibility of getting a demo that would like make the entire world lose their mind if they said, "Well, the demo to this game is available now," that would just I lose it. Uh, my third, because Robbie asked for five and he completely went off on a tangent, was <laughs> The Last of Us 2 release date. Uh, to me, this is very wow. possible uh, because Naughty Dog, they know how usually how long it takes them to, to When did we see The Last of Us, that trailer? The Last it's of Us 2 trailer? Last E3. That it? was E3? Okay. Yeah, so it's been, so. it's been it's been a little while. I mean, yeah, I'm it's thinking, definitely time to hear news about that. I'd love to hear a release date and, and see some potential, maybe a vertical slide to some gameplay footage and, and maybe some new things they've added to the gameplay mechanic. I know it's going to look incredible. I can't wait to see what Neil Druckmann and Bruce Raley are doing with this game. Um, and I, I think we're going to see something at E3, at least. Let me just say this real quick. E3 is not one on real news. It's not one, one on real games. You know, Final Fantasy VII, the remake is not out. Shin Mew 3 is not out. The games that helped Sony win E3 of, what, 2015? are not out, but they won E3 in 2015 just based on putting this news out. Uh, so I think I don't that think Sony that, are going to get called on that pretty soon, though, because there's been I mean, a lot more the, realization you know, on the fact that Sony is doing Scalebound was a big Xbox game, got canceled. E3 is not really one on 
the games that you know the games that come out in the future just one on what you what you show the consumer. Whoever gets the consumer the most excited is going to win E3. So theoretically, they can continue on with these lies and just make everybody excited, and, and in the end, piss everybody off. But that's another video I'm coming up with. I'm actually working on now how E3 has just been a lot of it's been about lies over the last couple of years, and my um, last two for my what a, hopes what a, before you do your last two. Why don't we try and organize this a little bit? And let's. I was going to do one at a time, a but yeah, you let's hear just a couple, okay, okay, uh, cool, cool. couple other people, and we'll come back to you. Gary, you got any hopes? What do you hope? You don't necessarily think this is going to happen, but you new hope, it's gonna happen. new hope. We need the yeah. new hope. Yeah, well, we, we've covered a, a couple of them there myself um, yeah. around the the Vita hardware refresh and Microsoft returning some some or resurrecting some IPs. The thing that I guess the hope that I've got for Nintendo is that they announced some big hitting third party ninty games that we haven't yes. seen. Yes. So things like Monster Hunter, Animal Crossing, Pokemon, or embracing the JRPG heritage. So, oh, a PUBG, we could get some murder on the go. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite hey. that way. I don't, I don't I like really how want you murder. Think. I don't really want murder on my Nintendo hardware. Oh, I want murder me. on the go. Absolutely. I, I would love that. You can I take the context any way you want, but. If you look at the, uh, have, uh, Briar and, and Beastly, have you made Japanese accounts yet on your Switches to look at the Japanese store? No. 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 Okay, so I made a Japanese account to have a look at things. I bought Disgaea 5, you know, months ago before it was released. Uh, pretty, I think it was released about three weeks after release in, in Japan, and the game's in English, so you can play it through. They're actually releasing Secrets of Mana, which is the entire Se Secrets of Mana series, which the West has been clamoring to get you know, the, right the way from the Game Boy Advance through to the, or the SNES through to the Game Boy Advance to, to some of the more recent titles, um, as well as a lot of remakes of, I think you're getting Fate Extella out there. So all these quality JRPGs and Japanese action um, <sighs> platformers and action beat-em-ups which we're just not going to see in the West. We don't have them slated as a release date, but they're already coming out this month or are released. So for me, I'd love to see that embraced on the Switch um, and use it as a JRPG machine, because to me, it is the next evolution of the Vita and something that I would play RPGs on all day long. I, I speaking, of the the Switch, of yeah. speaking of the Switch, I'd really love to see a new Metroid coming out for the Switch. I'd love to see them announce oh my it God, yes. this year. Like it's not, It may not be coming this year, but like, hey... New Metroid, 2D, 2D Metroid coming to the Switch, you know, maybe 2018. I'd love to see that. That was in my kind of reaches at the bottom of uh, Robbie's disconjointed list. Was in, <laughs> I, you guys uh, are a bunch of jerks, okay? I'm sick and tired of <laughs> Well, you hey, made you us made make a, a list, list, and then you start, the like, randomly this, picking like... shit off the list. We, we don't know where to go. Yeah. We, get, we made a list. <laughs> you started in the middle of the fucking list. <laughs> I guess because we had our personal ones organized differently. That's where it became confusing. But, but Brian, yeah. we're getting through it. Very similarly to, to your idea of a Metroid, I thought that it would be great, but it'd be a reach to see a dark, like a survival horror Metroid game on the Nintendo Switch. Ah. No, I think I think Nintendo needs to lean, take lean. It, like They need to lean into their brand. See, I don't want to see all this, you know, dark survival horror and things. For me, I want to see what makes Nintendo unique the games that i can't play on a ps4 or xbox if i want a survival horror game i can get them all day long on pc and playstation if i want animal crossing or pikmin i'm only going to get them on nintendo you yeah know, but that me, doesn't mean nintendo can't cater yeah to but the if they're going to make a metroid game i want too. i want it to be this like like the super nes version but bigger with more you know better graphics and like new and exciting um, weapons and abilities. I just want another great 2D version of Metroid. It's one of the my favorite gaming memories of all time. Of all was time playing the original yeah. Metroid, yeah, Super playing Metroid. Super Metroid, and I I would love to have a Metroid game on the Switch, like our old school. I love the Metroid Prime series. Well, the first two yeah. anyway. <laughs> but you out I, comments, I still do. I still do miss Metroid. You know, I still do miss that series, and I think it would be a big hit if it came out. I don't disagree. I think it's just personal taste for me. I, I want a game that I can just get lost in mm -hmm. and play casually for hours and hours and hours on end. And for me, Makes Metroid's, me you know, it's it's great, but I think it's one of them short sprint games. And I feel like we get a lot of them, especially things like Shovel Knight and you know, those sorts of games that are coming on the Switch. I just, mm -hmm. I want Nintendo to give me some of those AAA, you know, experiences that transport me back to my childhood and, and playing you know, Animal Crossing, Monster Hunter, Pokemon, that, that kind of stuff there. But you know, I don't know. I don't think we'll see any of it. If I'm completely honest with you, I think they're gonna 
are going to show Splatoon, Arms, and Mario Odyssey, uh, and then a lot of other small things. The other hope I got is that uh, on the big stage uh, of E3 at P- PlayStation's press conference, they're going to announce Destiny 2 Alpha for the week of E3, like they did with Ooh, Destiny 1. That was one of mine, too. God, I would love that, man. That would, yeah. It would be PlayStation exclusive. And you know that unfortunately would come along with it being announced on the at that press conference, but goddamn, the hype would be unimaginable for me. <laughs> oh my god, that's one of mine too. I hope I that think that's going to happen, bro. I think it's a great right. possibility. I don't know. It's a very it's... different world that Destiny Two is coming out that des- than Destiny. I mean, Destiny. I feel like the original Destiny had to make a name for itself, where Destiny Two has made a name, and it's. I don't know what about? they need to do an alpha. What about you get an alpha announced exactly like you say, and if you play the alpha, you get a free emblem when the game launches. As but we the did alpha in the costs, original. But the alpha costs five dollars. No, nah, they can't do that. What? $1. No, they can't they charge get, for that. I'm just saying. What would you say? Roasted. They just—it's uh, not even a possibility. What do you guys think are the possibility of us seeing a PS5 10-second just tease? It's just PS5 coming Oh, soon. man. I don't think the chances are very high, but I did put it on a thing, the, my list of things that I hope to see. That's on my list. I, I think it's a, a It's on your list of hopes, but not you yeah, think? Just, yeah, just no, not the ones I think. These are, these are my hopes. Um, I, I think it's a great possibility, or at least I would hope it's a possibility, that Sony put something preemptively out there to kind of stifle this fervor that's going to be around the Xbox Scorpio next month people are going to be rabid for this thing once if the uh, reveal goes as microsoft hopes and i would think that during sony's conference a day later kind of the way they did you know at e3 2013 i I feel like you know andrew house and the the sony team kind of came out and and changed their conference slightly after the missteps that were made by don matrick their backgrounds and everything seemed a little tacky and this is how you share and all that stuff seemed like it just came out of nowhere like it was just a quick moment of reflection they said we're going to just go this way i think if, if microsoft you know depending on what microsoft does at their conference i think sony could have a quick slide saying the ps5 coming soon or coming in 2018 or 2019 i think it's a, a, yeah i think it's a possibility i think it's 50 50 if i'm being honest i feel like part of me is like it would be such a good thing to combat scorpio at the same time though is it too soon if they post ps5 coming 2018 you know like people would be really upset like i just don't know i think it's it's so 50 50. this is the thing though robbie right everybody complained the ps3 and the xbox 360 were you know eight year nine year life cycles what the hell is going on the recession causes to keep these consoles forever five Mm. years five years is not long enough i know everybody's saying the ps5 years is good yeah. Everybody's saying the PS4 Pro just came out, but it's still just a PS4. And as Gary said, he, some people think it's a misstep. It's I still mean, the I PS4. Think... It still plays the same games as the PS4. And a five-year life cycle, to me, I've gotten my money's worth. I've played tons of games on this thing. Yeah, uh, and I think we see the PS5 as a shit-the-bed emergency slide. Like you say, I think that they've got that one <laughs> slide. Where if they look like they need something, they need ammunition, they've been you know balls to the wall completely destroyed by Microsoft, mm. then we see PS5 2019 uh, to reassure people that it's coming. We mm. No way are you going to see 2018. You think they would even announce that idea to do that? You put, you put something like that that far out, and you are telling consumers, don't spend money on a PS4 yeah. now. Why would they Save even your talk money about for it that if it's PS5. 2019? No. See, I think 2019... You just, you just put a fucking sense. master lock right on everybody's wallets. And that shit ain't open until that thing comes out. I think you do if it's 2018, but I think if it's 2019, you give people that grace period. I think if it's 2019, they don't mention it at all. If it's 2018, it will be announced. If it's 2019, absolutely not. I think it's stupid for them to announce it it now if it's 2018. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a risky step. It's just it's your only way to, to pour some water on the Scorpio. But then no, you the way you pour awesome. water on the Scorpio is by showing all the fucking awesome games you've got on the PS4 that aren't coming to the Xbox Scorpio. You got a good point there. Yeah, they got, really they got a really feature, nice right? $500 piece of hardware over there, but look at all the fun <laughs> you can have, be having with this. <laughs> you got a good point, man. Uh, this Boy. is my last uh, little, I guess, I guess you would call it a prediction on things that I would like to see, and it's not stuff I think we're likely to see, but Amy Hennig's new Star Wars game. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, I hope that so. is on my hope oh my list God. as well. Is a new, not, a new Star Wars game that's not battle battle uh, this battle battle Star Wars fields. Yes. Battlefront. 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 There's so many battle now, fucking games now. <laughs> now. Let me let me ask you a question, Briar. Uh, we've heard recent announcements or pronouncements of the Kotor series coming back uh, to the world of gaming at some yeah. time in the future. What if Amy Hennig's game was the new Knights of the Old Republic? I'd be I mean, amazed, but it'd be amazing. to me, that's the think kind of be. game I think it's gonna be a new... her mind is really suited for. I think that that would be amazing. And, uh, you know, all the old school fans of the Xbox game would just come flocking. Amy Hennig is, a, you know, a, a, a mastermind and, and a legend when it comes to creating so Who owns characters. that KOTOR license? Because they have a KOTOR game. Knights of the Old Republic is an MMORPG right now, right? Yeah. It's on iOS as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's on iOS and right. Xbox. So who owns that IP right now? The Kotor IP. Is it? It's Bio. Oh, no, it's, it's not an MMO. It, that's it, the it, New Republic. That's, that's not the Knights New of the Old Republic. Yeah, it's a di oh, okay. different different game. It's set in a similar period, but it's not Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really care what it's called. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Anytime you put Star Wars together with uh, somebody that is known for doing quality content, I'm going to be God, happy. Sure. Visceral. I loved Dead Space so much, and this is I think this is just going to be a killer game. I think it will be announced, too. That was one of my predictions for EA. I think they'll announce it. I think it'll so, open, too. I've got a couple more, I guess, more wildcard predictions that I think that I wrote down that I think we might see, but it would be very unlikely. One being that Nintendo announced full backward compatibility with the Wii U store for the Switch. That would be fantastic. That would be nice. Uh, and the reason that I think you could see that is that we've seen Wii U games obviously playing on the, the Switch. But whether or not you'd see them as a, hey, just go and buy them now yourself, or whether they drip feed them one game at a time, I don't know. Either way, they're still making the purchase money. So, I don't know what we'd see. Related to that, I have under my wild cards that we get a Nintendo Virtual Console launch. That's what we need. Oh, Day and date, you think, with the conference? I mean, to at least say... It's it's coming within the next month or so. Like it's like to actually I bet firmly. Hundred percent. They will talk about it. Out there. What's going to yeah. be on it though? Is it just going to be GameCube and SNES? I think it'll be. Game. I think it'll be all of that stuff. Yeah. I think it'll be the virtual console that we're used to seeing on the other consoles. Let yeah. me ask you guys a quick question, okay? I was thinking, what could Sony? I mean, Microsoft do to really screw Sony over at this E3 press conference? Do you guys think it's possible? They could show off. All of the games that they've been the la for the last two years, they've been just concentrating on building up first parties, rebuilding first parties, getting second parties going, getting exclusive titles with third parties. They could show off. They could do a Sony press conference where they go game, 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 game. They could do that, and that combined with new hardware at a reasonable price, Sony would be. It'd be hard for Sony to compete with that. If, yeah. if we look at if the past is any indication, uh, the Xbox 360 Slim, the PS3 Slim, these consoles ended up at a 199 price point. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that we could see another price drop in the Xbox One S? It's possible. What's the yes. price on it now? Yeah, it's it's 249. I mean, it, it's it's very reasonable, uh, and it's mm -hmm. very competitive with the PS4 Slim. If they were it's to do a price drop. To bring it more in line with what we've seen in the past of slim versions of uh, consoles, bringing it more in line with the 199, 219 price point, that could really put a hurting on, on the PlayStation 4 brand at this point. And, and that's something I was thinking about. What if they announced the Scorpio at a really reasonable price of 399 to 4, uh, 450, but at the same time announced that the Xbox One S is now 199 or 219 if they want to, you know, get the last couple of dollars $50 out? $50 dollars make a difference for that? Hell yeah! It makes. It's what still the, is that? It's still the so. cheapest 4K Blu-ray player on the market, isn't it? Or is one it of the right cheapest. Now? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It still is. Yeah. And if you got it at one ninety nine, that's a very, very cheap 4K Blu-ray player. If you lean into that, with 4K being, right, I guess, got Windows the... eight on it, huh? Is it? Say, say what? <laughs> that's a too bad. It's got Windows eight on it. <laughs> God damn it, Briar! <laughs> there's been a dashboard refresh on it. I think it's a lot more responsive. But no, I mean, with the 4K Blu-ray player in it, if they could get it out at one nine nine. Then you doing a PS3 there? You're selling it to people that don't really Ooh, game, that just, they just buy want it. The 4K Blu-ray. You're absolutely right. You're yeah. so right. I don't know how much money Microsoft actually makes off of selling consoles, and if they got to take a loss, do that, and that's why people are buying it. That means they're not going to get that on add-on sales for software. 
Well, it, once it's in the home, you you'd be likely to pick up a, an Xbox game more than anything yeah, else. Yeah, you, you definitely would. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. We got kind of mixed up in our in our order here. There's another game that I, I had in my Xbox uh, conference that I didn't mention because I was scanning back and forth to try to keep up with the convoluted. Well, let's um, finish the uh, wild the cards before we get onto that. Well, this is going back to what we already did. So, just a quick mention. I think that we could possibly see um, Ori in the Blind Forest too. That's it. Oh, that'd be cool. Ooh, that would be cool. So, my last wild card, which is probably a, a quick one, is for Sony, uh, and this is kind of a Vita successor, but this is a true. Oh God! Here we Switch go again. <laughs> competitor. This is a this is a Switch competitor, and the reason that I, I've I've drawn on this is that Sony did put out a patent for a handheld device that was it looked like a DualShock 4 that's been split in half with a screen on it oh, and yeah, that patent came out that was about six months ago um, and that to me people thought that was going to get announced with the PS4 Pro so they thought it was going to be the Pro and the portable so my theory on this is that we're going to see something called the PlayStation Echo um, Echo being you know replicating what you see on the screen and in your mm. device I think we're going to see something that is a a Vita successor in the sense that it's a handheld. It's going to have backward compatibility with their existing Vita library because, you know, no one played those games, as you say, in, in the West, they just weren't played. But I think it's going to lean into the the fact that you can dock it and, you know, use an HDMI or whatever to, to play it on the TV. So I think they're going to just take the remote play aspect and then also add the Switch capability into it because it, it feels to me like that patent was was, was logged for a reason. And it's oh. something that they don't have any competition for at the moment. No one can compete with the Switch. Uh, l let me clarify something, Gary. I'm not Robbie. I 100% in my heart want you to be 100% right. I wish you worked at Sony. Uh, you know, I've had tons of fun uh, with my with, with my portable consoles over the years. I, and I saw the patent that you're talking about. It does look very similar to the Switch. And God damn it, it's like a dream come true. I don't think Sony's done with portables. I, I really don't. It's something they've done since they've had the PlayStation brand. Mm -hmm. I, I just feel like over the last year or so, we haven't really heard much other than that 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 patent. It would be amazing. It's kind of a, a reach, but I would 100% be in on that. They've stolen from Nintendo before. So as soon as we saw the Wii controllers doing successfully, the Move controllers came out, which were the same technology, just with little glowing balls on top. So there's there's been direct replication of something that was a successful idea. So I don't know whether or not we're going to see it again. A lot of people are playing the Switch and saying how innovative and unique it is as a piece of hardware. I just don't know. It, it might be the time now. It might not be. I got a few predictions pertaining to overall themes. And th this might not be something you see uh, on stage at the conferences, but more like, you know, other things mm -hmm. that you might see, uh, you know, featured articles or uh, smaller booths at E3 and I, I'm expecting to see more games incorporating VR, uh, kind of like the way Resident Evil 7 did it, where they build mm -hmm. a game that's playable, and it's a it's a real video game, and it also has VR, right? So you can play it on a, on a monitor or a TV, uh, or you can also play it in VR. And the reason I think I see that, uh, we'll see this is because I think Resident Evil 7 saw a huge boost to sales because of this on the PlayStation, mm -hmm. right? Is people who weren't necessarily into Resident Evil or horror games were into buying this because they wanted a VR experience and this was a very good one. Uh, so I could, and it, I don't think that it costs a whole lot of extra development to get that VR going. It's basically just the game is already there. You just have to de design another user interface for that game, right? So I, I could imagine that, seeing more of that, especially on the PlayStation where the VR headset has sold so well. Um, I expect to see more Destiny and Division type of games. Uh, Activision is very bullish on Destiny right now because of player engagement. And player engagement uh, makes a lot of money. You can sell a lot of content. You can sell a lot of DLC. You can sell a lot of microtransactions in these games that engage players for a very long time. And there's very few of these games now. I think Destiny, and to a smaller extent, The Division has shown that if you build a game that can engage players for a very long time, it's not just an eight-hour experience or it's not just a, you know, a multiplayer component of a game like Call of Duty, that you can actually make quite a bit of money after the initial sale of the game. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would imagine seeing more games 
not necessarily knockoffs of Destiny, but more games that incorporate uh, other aspects of MMOs and role-playing games into uh, more popular genres like shooters or uh, third-person action. So, Brian, on your first point with respect to VR being incorporated more into existing titles, Mm -hmm. there's been a lot of talk about potentially Bethesda showcasing or wanting to showcase Fallout 4 VR Mm -hmm. at this Mm -hmm. conference, whether it's Oculus. I think they're developing it for the Vive at the moment, but that's just their primary development platform. Mm -hmm. Do you think we potentially see, as maybe a way to ramp up the Scorpio, do you think we see Fallout 4 VR being a launch title for the Scorpio VR? It'd be cool. If they have a VR solution, if, if Xbox has a VR solution, which I think is very possible. It's not out of the question. Uh, then, I mean, it, it'd be great. It'd be a great get for Microsoft, right? Because PlayStation Huge. VR already has this installed base, and they've definitely got developers working on VR games. But if Microsoft comes out with a five or six hundred dollar console, and then a, a headset that costs three or four hundred dollars on top of that, they're going to have to have f- big names that you can only do there. So that would be really cool. I'm thinking yeah, Fallout's awesome. the type of title that could shift enough units, you know, because that's yeah. a, a hundred hour game, you know, that you could get lost mm-hmm. in effectively. And the Xbox is the lead console for that game too, so yeah, that's yeah. very reasonable to speculate on that. Awesome. One more, you guys are- one more prediction, like an overall, like kind of trending kind of thing, okay. is I expect mm-hmm. to see more King of the Hill or survival games uh, made by bigger companies coming to consoles specifically. Mm, okay. Uh, Things like, you know, PUBG getting a console deal, uh, you know, but also like bigger, bigger brands. You know, they're seeing the success that H1Z1's had on Twitch, that PUBG is currently having on Twitch. These bigger, these bigger development houses are going to want a piece of that, I believe. And I wouldn't be surprised. You saw The Division launched their survival DLC, and it was amazing to play a survival type game that had production value, right? That was like, that was a big, that was a big turnaround for that type of game. So a game that is developed by a big production house, like a, a you know, a, that has some money and some backing behind it, but has those survival kind of themes behind it, I think could be very successful. And I wouldn't be surprised to see more than one company taking a shot at it. Yeah. Well, that's something I'd like to see. And I think that more than likely you're absolutely right about that, Briar. You know, you got to follow the money. And it, really, these companies, their job is to make money. And, and, and games like The Division and Destiny have raked in quite a bit compared to games that get just money on the front end when they sell a game. So yeah, I, I couldn't imagine them not following that that trend or that pattern of creating games in the future. I think you're right. We're going to see more and more games that follow that trend. Awesome. Anybody totally. got any more wild cards that they haven't mentioned? I yet? have a big one I want to drop here. This is uh, You guys are going to call me completely crazy for this, but here we go. This is a bold prediction. Half-Life 3 will be officially announced. <laughs> In development for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. No release time frame or window will be given. A cinematic trailer will be shown, but there will be no gameplay just yet. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> is, Valve do not I need to. to make games anymore. They just yeah. don't need to make games. They're making Bro. too much money. They actually them. said they are making games, but they're no, they focusing they on VR. development. They're yeah. focusing on VR. Really? Uh, you guys? But they were they were asked about Half Life Three as recently as like a couple of months ago, and and confirmed no. I know. I just wanted to make a ballsy prediction. That was my ballsy. <laughs> that is a one. ballsy one. Yeah. No, dude, I hope it happens. I, I, Especially I, I, put it on PlayStation and Xbox One. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's straight to point. Steam, boy. So it's even more crazy. <laughs> do you do you guys think that we'll get a release date for God of War? Uh, it's twenty eighteen. Yes. Early next year. Yep. You All guys right. think we'll see more gameplay or get any more news at E3 this year? There will be a gameplay demo. Yeah, that was one of my predictions. I think the it's time to put up or shut up here, guys. This is the stuff that you actually... You're, you're putting your name on the line here. What is going to actually happen at E3 this year? You are not fucking around anymore. This is your personal prediction. This is happening at E3. Beast, you want to start us off? God damn it, sure. Uh, well... <laughs> PS4 price drop. I mean, PS4 Pro price drop. You think there's mm. there's definitely going to be a PS4 Pro price drop? Yes, I do. What do you think I, it's going to go down to? I think, I think it's going to drop down to 
two ninety nine. I think they, I think we might get a revision. Brian. Really? So yeah. it's three ninety nine now. You think it's going to get drop a hundred bucks? It's very possible if they if they announce a slim. If it's not a slim, then we're going to see it for a PS4 three, three. Pro slim. Yeah, well, that's what that's they're talking about. Oh. No, it's not. This yes, is fucking is. Sony we're talking about. You out of your mind? Um, that's just what I think, and I could be wrong. You know, I've been wrong before. Uh, I think we're going to definitely get details and see gameplay of the Nintendo Switch Skyrim. Well, let somebody else go. We'll do one at a time here. Okay, I'm sorry, Gary. You got one that you, this is a this is a prediction. Your name is on the line here. This is your yeah. analyst phone call right now. <laughs> we all fire. We're all fires. <laughs> Investors are listening. <laughs> Investors um, are listening to me saying that Call of Duty World War Two is going to lose a significant amount of goodwill and hype as a result. <laughs> really? Of this show. And the reason I really? say that is that wow. it, it released in a vacuum. The news. You know, you show us World War Two soldiers in Call of Duty, we're going to get incredibly happy about it. You show me it in the context of all the other announcement at E3. It's just another Call of Duty. You know, there's so Ooh. much noise on there. So I think that they're going to enter this show on a high. I think they're going to leave this E3 as, yeah, Call of Duty looked okay. All right. I'm going to go next because I've got the exact opposite prediction for Call of Duty World War II. <laughs> I right. think they're wow. going to show off the multiplayer and that it's going to be a game changer for the Call of Duty series. They, yeah, they'll have the same 6v6 or 8v8 multiplayer that you're used to but they're also going to have a much more expanded multiplayer with a ton of new features that you're not used to seeing in call of duty they're going to come out they're going to show the multiplayer it's very early for them to be showing multiplayer at e3 but they know that the cod series is on the ropes they know they need to change it up and they are going they're going after battlefield and they are going hard and Love i think it. i think they're going to come out of e3 and they're going to be in good shape so gary We'll see. We'll see. That's Holy it. shit. Somebody's <laughs> going to be wrong. Right, right. Wow. This will be a fun one. Be I like exciting. it. Robbie, you got one? That? Yes. I think it may seem a little early. I think a Bloodborne 2 will be announced, and it will be out early next year. Bloodborne 2 announced early next <laughs> year. so good. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. Guarantee it. Uh, Beastly, what's your next one? I, I want to say it, but I don't. But part of me wants to say it, so I'm going to goddamn say it. I think we're going to see Horizon Zero Dawn multiplayer DLC. What? Horizon Zero Dawn multiplayer <laughs> DLC. I don't give what? a fuck, man. The game is made. Neither does anybody else. That is the most yeah. least interesting prediction yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> Why would you want multiplayer DLC for that game? That game is it's, no. It's it doesn't need it. I think it would be. I think it would be awesome, man. I mean, at least we're going to get single player DLC. Do you even play Horizon? Where did you pull this out of? Out of my ass, Briar. <laughs> I just pull my underwear back on. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to... Um, Beastly, actually... before the show, Googled E3 predictions, and somebody had written Horizon DLC in there. <laughs> this is all my shit, goddammit. This ain't nobody's shit but mine. My next like one he's... is... <laughs> he's gone on one of those E3 predictions generators and just click right. generate. Yeah. It's like Horizon you're... multiplayer. <laughs> all um, right, Gary, what you got? Yeah, I'm actually gonna gonna put my nuts on the line this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the lad out and just just slap it on the desk and say I'm gonna double down on this. I said it was a a, a hope. It's gonna move to a prediction. I think we're oh. gonna see a hardware refresh of the Vita. I'm gonna go for it. He said not, it three not, times not, already. We believe you, Gary. Wow. Gary L2, believes R2, in this shit. L2, R2, R3, R, L3. That's it. That's that's my my prediction. It's gonna happen. We're gonna see it. Hardware refresh of the Vita. Yeah, so same thing, not a Vita 2, same thing, and that's what the patent was referring to. All right. Any of you, what do you guys think about that prediction? I believe Gary could be right. Gary is really putting his balls on the line there. It's a lot more <laughs> likely to me than getting like a, a new a new console. Like a new I could see it. I could see it. I don't expect it, but I could see it. I, I, I don't know though. At the same time, I think the Vita hardware is actually really nice. Like the current it is. The, the revision of the Vita hardware is very nice. I, I do miss having clickable thumbsticks and L2, R2. But to launch a redesign, it's risky. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of R&D to build that thing. And then to put that thing out there, you want to advertise it. You make it super cheap. It's just the definitive Vita. You give it micro SD cards, which people have been clamoring for forever. And you sell a crap ton of digital hardware for the Vita. Uh, digital software, sorry, for the Vita. And then you define your remote play proposition properly. I think it just makes sense. 
you, know, you get the Vita back in the shell. In, I'd love in, to in, see it, Gary. I don't think it'll happen. That's, That's not right. happening. You guys will all have my nuts then in, in one month's time. <laughs> Gary, you got enough, you got enough <laughs> Vitas, to to Gary. Mail. Gary owns enough Vitas. He can build the next version of the Vita with those. <laughs> so you can make it happen yourself. <laughs> start, start doing it. Gary just can't. wrote a letter to Please, Sony. If you, if you build this thing, trust me, I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, uh, Robbie, you got another one? What you got? Sorry, right, what? Okay, got another wild card. Uh, PlayStation Five will be announced, guaranteed. Huh? If it's not, I'll quit the show. This show. Oh fuck! It was nice knowing you, Robbie. We love you, man. Looking for fourth host. I'm not being serious. <laughs> Just relax. <laughs> All right, look, I'll give you guys a serious prediction, and I will put my balls on the line, my big, hefty, yeah. brown balls. Give them to me. We're going to see the reveal of Doom 2. Oh, yes. Really? I am so down for this. I don't. I think you're wrong, because they're doing Quake this year. Yeah. The Quake it's, Champions it's, is this year's, like, uh... I don't think it, it'll be nearly as know, popular as Doom was. Doom was no, I don't. I don't think so either. Incredible. Absolutely not. Doom you're was totally incredible. Right. Yeah. But damn it, I would love to see it. Maybe they'll do like a little like teaser image though, and then like the date like 2018 or something. That'd be cool. But I, I, I think Quake Quake is the target, like targeting that same crowd, and I think they're just gonna focus on Quake and then Doom is next year. You really think it's the same crowd? I mean, I've, I've never really been into Quake, but I've always loved Doom. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I think with that said too, we should shift our focus over to Bethesda now that we're talking about them, just specifically their conference. I've got, I've got one more prediction before we do. Um, yeah, let's we'll do it. And that's just to close it off. It's Nintendo, uh, and this isn't a wild card. This is just a conservative one. I think Nintendo are going to lose E3 intentionally <laughs> in in, a mis in in just a big way. And the reason that I think they're going to do that is that they don't want to show anything in the fighting genre game because it's going to piss all, well, it's going to piss all over arms. So if they show Smash Bros, arms doesn't sell. Yeah. Uh, if they show anything that's... sell regardless. <laughs> I think if they double down that. on it, it might. I think Splatoon 2 as well. If they show any first-person shooters, then Splatoon 2 dies. Mario Odyssey, if they show Super Mario 3D World ported, that dies. So I think they double down on the software they I want. I don't think that's true. What's with your, well, your visions of death? Well, the reason, that, death. the reason that I think that is that Nintendo have an ability that Sony and Microsoft don't. And that's that they can pull a Nintendo Direct Treehouse or a Nintendo Direct whenever they want. And they can have all the attention on that game and have half an hour of you absolutely glued to the screen saying Pokemon's coming or Animal Crossing's coming or something else mm. is coming. They don't need E3. I think we get more information on the stuff that's coming out for the Switch in the next six months. Like Brian said, maybe the virtual console. But I think we see no big games for Nintendo. I, I think Gary's right here. I think that you're... You're gonna see them double down on the news of stuff that they've already announced. They're gonna they'll show more Mario, they'll show more Splatoon, they'll show more Arms, but to see them announce something brand new, I think they'll wait till later in the year for that. They don't uh, need E3 and to share the limelight. They've got Nintendo Directs. They can own the news cycle. Uh, one of one of the uh, viewers in the chat made a great prediction, and I got to agree with it. STF922 said, I predict that Kingdom Hearts 3 will get another delay. Ah. <laughs> I don't even see that game coming this year, no doubt. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Should we move on to news here? I wanted to do Bethesda, though. Mm, okay. You, you always want to play with everything, Robbie. God damn it. We're I running out of time. And, oh, and, and, and happy Mother's place. Day. Everybody watching, if you got a mother, and I'm sure you all do, tell her that the Beastly Thoughts live crew said Happy Mother's Day. We yeah, Happy been Mother's a great Day, day for her. Absolutely. Uh, we got, Unless you're in Europe, We do have a hard time limit, right? Beastly, you got to be out of here at what time? <laughs> 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah, we've got to think. Are we that. doing the news, or are we, what are we doing here? Let's well, no, just keep doing the hell with the news. Look, the, all the right, news we're going to skip the news this week. All right, well, we'll push it till next week. Yeah. Great. It's okay. We have a special show this week. So starting off Bethesda, I think that Wolfenstein The New Colossus will be announced, and it will launch this October. A full gameplay demo will be shown, and it will open the conference. I think it's pretty likely. I'll play another you Wolfenstein. Think... The last one Sounds was great. Good to me. Love the last one. I think yeah. it's time. I think it'll be this year. I think that uh, Bethesda will, will show and uh, give us a, a projected time frame for release for The Evil Within 2. And this one will actually be a good game. 
So, are Bethesda they're the lead developers on the Skyrim port for the Switch, or is it Nintendo that are owning the development? No, so it's who's Bethesda Game Studios. Bethesda, yeah. So, yeah. If Bethesda are owning it. Is that something that they lead with? Because that's a bit. I know it's an old game, but it's a big thing for them to have it on the Switch. People, the Switch is a hot property. You, you know, you I talk about a huge. Switch. Game. That would be huge, Gary. If they live like a six-year-old that. game that's been released multiple times. I, well, well, Robbie, Nintendo we, will talk we don't about have it. we don't have any details on it. What if they they reveal that this thing has new exclusive Nintendo Switch DLC? That'll There's be at the Nintendo conference. That won't be Bethesda. I don't okay. think Nintendo care about it that much to do it. I don't mean it disrespectfully. I think that Nintendo have got bigger franchises than Skyrim. I think Skyrim's there to bring a different demographic into the Switch. I, I don't think Nintendo would market Skyrim in the way that Bethesda would. Yeah, Miss think- Cleo, you don't know everything. I mean, I'm sorry. Briar, you got any thoughts on Bethesda? Not really. Okay. This Thanks, is where the show Brian. falls apart, ladies and gentlemen. Fallout, uh, Fallout 4 VR. Do we see them going big on their conference, or do we see them leaning into someone else's? It'll be there. I don't know if it'll be huge. Uh, I mean, that's a big, big VR title. It's something that's it's not big been done for before. VR, but is it big for everybody? Yes, no, it's not. Mm, it's not a huge audience for VR at the moment, so don't know. Wild right. card for Bethesda. I'd like to see a Morrowind remake. I had it on the Ooh. original Xbox, and it was really awesome. And I would no, love Wilson to see that. Wilson in chat right now would love to see that too. Or Oblivion. Really? Yeah. Even Oblivion would make me very happy. Wilson, you're the fucking man. <laughs> Oblivion's 10 years old too. Like that would make sense. 11 years old now, actually. I think. I, I, yeah. My, my number one prediction before I go, guys, because I got to back out of the show. It's Mother's Day. It's my son's birthday. And I'm not trying to make the wife angry on Mother's Day because the night will no. end poorly for me. So my last prediction, this is my number one prediction. My balls are on the line. Mm-hmm. Konami will reveal and show us and give us a release date for Metal Gear Survive, and everybody's going to love it. Oh my! F- I you know everybody's. Gonna I know love you're it. trying to be funny, Beastly, but what I find most humorous about tonight's show is how last week you were absolutely bullish about the PS5 being announced and released in twenty or announced this time and released in twenty eighteen. Now you're kind of backing this, off this that. week. I hey, man, really I- feel like you pulled way back on it. Hey, yeah, hey, 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 look, you're look, way back. Let, like you're let, a little let, bit. <laughs> let, let me just tell you this, all right? I yeah. still stand by. I still, I still stand by the idea that Sony will do something this conference this year, uh, alluding to the PS5. Uh, I think it's very possible that it could come out in 2018. I don't think it's possible in my own mind that it'll come out any later than 2019. Uh, so for me, you know, that was in my projected things that I thought were definitely going to happen. The PS5. Mm-hmm. Uh, 10 second Wait, kind of tease. You didn't share it publicly. You're too scared to share it publicly? No, Robbie fucked us up. He said, We're going to start at the top. He started at the fucking bottom. I was like, What the hell is happening? All right. What, what do you mean? What are you saying? Briar, tell him what I mean, okay? Everybody else kind of took over. All right, right Beasley, like, we know you got to go. Thank you for joining us tonight. Peace, fellas. I'll Bye, see Beasley. you guys we next you. week. I love you too, Robbie. <laughs> tell your mom I said happy Mother's Day. Okay. Bye bye. Sounded ominous. No, I like it, man. You're like, right, we're going to have preparation. You've got a week to write it up. You Here's the thing. Let me just talk for a moment. We got a so list. Prep. We got a list. It starts at the top. It goes to the bottom. And then All right, it's time to go live. No one followed it. All right, I'm going to – what do you mean nobody followed it? You wrote the list. Everybody filled out the list, and then you didn't stick to the list for the show. <laughs> I think I was confused about my own list. I didn't – the problem was I had everything written down. We needed to order it. I think there were five five categories that Robbie sent us. There was the top five things we hope to see happen. Then the next one was the top five things we think will happen. And then he wanted predictions for each individual conference. Which I think there was overlap, too. Which there was I was, with. There was a lot of overlap. And then the wild card yeah. predictions, which I kind of just put the same shit as I put for I hope would happen. <laughs> That's the problem. There's too much. I think I needed to create. And then we had the Xbox Scorpio overlap. name, price, and release date. And then the games that will open and close each conference. And then, yeah. Robbie, the question you led with was, I believe, what would my, what would Microsoft open the conference with, and how would and how much would the uh, how much would the Xbox Scorpio <sighs> retail for? <laughs> like, we're like, uh, <laughs> that's one of the biggest things. Right. Talking about games to open and close, then seeing as we're on it. 
to get us back on uh, some track. Did you guys <laughs> See, put down? Here's a, the problem a because Sony a lot Microsoft. of these were supposed to be integrated together. No one did that except me. Like you know what I mean? When we you made the list, Robbie. You're the one do telling us how to do it. <laughs> We're only following the instructions you gave enough. us. I'm sorry. So, games to open and close each conference. We've got Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. What do we think for Sony? I'm going to list Gary doesn't like opening. it when us kids fight, Robbie. <laughs> I'm just so angry right now. It's fine. For Sony, I'm opening up with Destiny 2, and I'm closing with Red Dead Redemption 2. What do we think, Brian? Sony, uh, I'm going with Destiny 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2. You're gonna that's just what you just said, isn't it? That's what I just said. So okay, I'm going to change it to an unannounced, previously unannounced game for opening. They'll put Destiny in the middle somewhere, and then Red Dead Redemption 2. I can't I can't, mm. can't go off of that for the closer. I think it's Robbie, too what, important. What do you think, Robbie? Sucker Punch's IP will be opening. Okay. Uh, something first party really big will close. I'm not sure what specifically. Could be Bloodborne 2. It might be that, but I'm Blood not porn. 100%. Bloodborne 2? Blood porn, yes. <laughs> Blood porn too. That sounds just deeply, deeply traumatizing. Okay, Microsoft. Um, I've yeah. got opening Sea of Thieves, and I had closing Halo 6, which is now gone. So I'm going to say unannounced IP, because I don't know what else they could show that's bigger than Sea of Thieves. I and also had Halo 6 as a closer. Until uh, the news broke. So as far as I, I know, they're that. both unannounced, because I don't know anything else that Sony could or Microsoft could be releasing. It's like Gears 5. They just came out with Gears 4 like last I year, mean, though. Yeah, that's it, too soon. They wouldn't I do mean, that. I, I, they just have so little in the way of like games. That's the problem. Like this, to me, the E3 needs to be about games. Like, yeah, they're they're announcing and releasing a new console this year, but they gotta give me reasons to play it, to buy it. They don't yeah, have the games. I literally that's the problem. Don't care about Scorpio. If there's no. They've really never sold me on the Xbox but... One. That's I and I, you know, I bought one. Of course, I have an Xbox One, but they've never really gave me a reason to turn it on. No, no, I hear you, Robbie. What do you think, Microsoft? I think they'll open with Scorpio plus something new, and close with that third party IP or not third party, uh, third person IP that I mentioned. I think that'll fill the void with Scale Bound. Something big at the end that we don't know about. Interesting. How bad was Scalebound that they let that one fucking die? They did like the same the only with Fable one. Legends. Fable Legends went as well. That was like yeah. an Evolve style game. No one it, cared right? about that game though. Let's be real. We're a Scalebound. Yeah, but at least it was something to release on their console. <laughs> yeah. Like true. That's... Yes. I think we see Fable reborn. I do think we Fable's a strong franchise, and Fable, if you do it right, if you create a Witcher three style Fable with the mm -hmm. same quirky British world that they had, I think Fable could be a strong RPG. I would play that for sure. Yeah. I just think a anytime you say, the right like, world. The Witcher 3, though, I'm like, yeah, I'll play that. <laughs> so <laughs> That's it's all you got to say. And it's like The Witcher 3. That's they it. got a new PS Vita game, and it's like The Witcher 3. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> oh. Awesome. And then Nintendo, um, I've got opening Splatoon 2. And to close, I'm in a toss-up, because I think it's going to be Mario Odyssey. Uh -huh. well, I really hope it's Pokemon for the Switch and 3DS. I All really right. hope it is. I went opening Mario New Donk City and then close with Pokemon. My yeah. opening would be Super Mario Odyssey. Closing would be New Metroid. And I also say it's going to be out this fall. New Metroid? Oh. Yes. Triple A Metroid. 2D or 3D? And it's out this year. 2D or That's 3D? Big. 3D. What about both? <laughs> what about God both? God damn it, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's like near automata where it's got 2d and 3d elements where it shifts in view Ooh. and it takes you into 2d levels and then brings you back out into a 3d platform that sounds good. possible okay i think it'll be strictly <laughs> 3d though it'll be so that was pretty much it on my games to open and close. Uh, Brag, Robbie, Brag Doc is in uh, chat and he, he mentions crackdown 3 we never mentioned crackdown 3 but for me crackdown Crackdown sold because it had the Halo beta in it. And then Crackdown, and it ended up being a great game, And but the only pe reason anybody bought it was because it had the Halo beta in it. And then yeah, Crackdown 2 came out, and it was really disappointing. So Crackdown 3, it's not it, it's not like this supportive like pillar of the Xbox brand that people make it out to be. It's a, It was a lark that it ever sold in the first place. Yeah, I don't know and how big it, it is. And then it had a disappointing sequel. So to me, Crackdown feels a lot like the infamous brand for PlayStation mm -hmm. in that it's kind of fun 
Uh, it's an open world kind of city roaming game to an extent, pseudo open world. Um, the thing that puts me off about Crackdown 3 is I've not seen much around it, but there was some talk around the city destruction being possible because of cloud computing power. So you needed to be always connected because there were going to be supercomputers that were going to be allowing you to do these the city-wide destruction. Mm -hmm. You're playing multiplayer against Watson. Yeah, I mean, that to me just sounds broken and it sounds like something that could potentially not function at any time you say to Sounded me like always online. are getting bullshit right from the get-go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't have a compelling loop to me. There's nothing that's making me want to find out more. You know, you're trying to sell me with a technical gimmick, like Red Faction, if you remember, where you could blow up parts of the wall. Do you remember yeah. the old Red Faction? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and it was a, a really average FPS that you could blow up parts of the wall in. That was that was the kind of the loop. So I just worry that Crackdown 3 is selling on a gimmick. Sea of Thieves, we didn't mention at all um, for Microsoft, and that's probably because BC was here and his pony was rubbing off it's on just, all of us. Well, <laughs> no, it's because there's just so much, that's all. So don't don't be mad at Beastly. He, he, he's doing. I'm not mad. He's, we we love him deeply. We love him deeply. But the Sea of Maybe Thieves, too deeply. I think is going to be good because, like you said, Brian, there's going to be that theme around the uh, customer engagement and a game that's persistent online um, and has that MMO community element. And I think Sea of Thieves is going to be the sleeper hit for Xbox. Will that fact, come out this year? It has to. And I think if we if we're going to do one last category, I guess to close off, is going to be sleeper star of the show uh, and i'm going to lead off by saying sea of thieves is going to be the sleeper star of the show for me i feel like that's mm. the that is the game that's like the undercurrent of conversation right now it's like yeah. if you if you stream video games right now you've got sea of thieves very much on your radar because the from what it looks like it's gonna be fun to play and fun to watch and you, you're gonna be able to play it with your friends and it's going to create a lot of, you know, just like a ridiculous kind of shit happening all over the place. Sea of Thieves looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, or no, yeah. or a No Man's Sky. We don't know yet. So yeah, that's the other thing. It could be. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. But it, you I mean, people have their eye on that game. When I talk to other YouTubers and other Twitch streamers, Sea of Thieves comes up a lot. So is that also your sleeper hit for E3 then you think? Um, Leaper. Let me think about it. Robbie, you go with that. Problem is, I'm also thinking, too, what could be a sleeper hit? <laughs> like, what's under the radar, but we know could really knock someone's socks off? Like, kind of just come out of nowhere. Um, yeah, it's hard I feel to like say, maybe right? Days go on, actually, I yeah. think. People were excited for that, but there was, you know, God of War and all this amazing stuff around it that I don't think people were as high on Days Gone. I think that game might was just that the be one with like the. It, a lot of people thought at first when we saw the trailer that it was it was another Last of Us, and then it turned out to yeah. be like yeah, there's like a ton, hundreds of zombies, yeah, hundreds of you. zombies, and he's just like yeah, randomly, yeah, that game looks cool. I think people like again, people were excited for that, but like we saw God of War, which looked incredible, and Horizon and stuff, and I think that went a little under the radar. So I think that has the potential to kind of come out and be like, I think so. We, we don't think Assassin's Creed with the uh, new Egyptian vibe is going to be any way a departure for the series or anything that's going to revitalize it. Well, I think it's kind of it's hard to land. Like if you jump off a pyramid, you got to really you got to get some. Fucking horizontal hay bales too. leap yeah. action to get to that hay bale. I mean, it's that's a long way to go. We got the a sphinx, I guess. Maybe. A sphinx, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just don't know whether or not we're interested enough with Assassin's Creed Origins. Whether or not we think that's going to be, is it going to be like The Witcher Three, Brian? That's the question. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy it if it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's there hope you go. So. You know, it's funny. The Assassin's Creed, I, I loved the first two games. I was one of the few people who really adored the first one, right? And I understood I had some problems when I was playing it, but it just felt so new and fresh. And then Assassin's 2 came out, and it really, you know, it took a lot of what was good about the first one and then really improved on it in a lot of tons of ways. But it just never evolved, and they kept coming out with them so fucking fast. That, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. it's hard to imagine that series gaining any interest in, from anybody at this point. Bloodborne 2? Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't feel like a sleeper. Star Wars Battlefront doesn't feel like a sleeper. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just going to... 
Sea of Thieves. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Sea of Thieves, but in reality, it'll probably be some random game that we've never heard of until until E3 actually happens. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So the Beastly Thoughts crew are backing Sea of Thieves in this E3, are we? Is that the one we're saying uh, the one to watch? I, I definitely am interested. I'm watching it. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, totally. My awesome. my my interest in playing video games revolves around having fun with other players now a lot more than it used to. Destiny changed something in me, like fundamentally but about how I enjoy video games where mm -hmm. it's become much more of a social thing than it used to be. I guess it was originally too, you know, sitting in, sitting in front of a TV with a couple of your buddies on the couch, you know, punching each other on the shoulder. Like, I feel like it's returned to that, but it's online and you just want those interactions. And the more, the more ridiculous shit you can get up to the better. And Sea of Thieves looks like it's going to be the perfect vehicle for that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think that's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's everything I wanted to say about E3. Do you guys have anything else to add? No. I feel like we no, talked to shit No, I think we're E3. good. Um, we that was it. a lot. We I don't even feel basically. like you need to watch the show anymore. <laughs> After what? I mean, we just covered E3, as far as I'm concerned. We, we have, went through everything. We nailed it. We really nothing, did. There's nothing that could be announced at E3 this, at this point that can in any way surprise anybody. We've just speculated <laughs> on the craziest things. Yeah, I can't see you like the, the PlayStation Echo. You mark my words; it's coming. <laughs> I it's hope there. you're right. Can you imagine? Or even if there is like an actual Vita too. Uh, oh my god, that'll blow my mind. So, wow. housekeeping, Briar. This week you're going to be in LA. In LA, yeah, heading out on Wednesday. Uh, Streaming schedule, I think I should mention, is probably going to be somewhat limited. Um, I might stream on Monday just to make up for the streams I'm going to miss later in the week. Mm -hmm. um, Tuesday is going to be all about packing and getting ready to go. Obviously, I'll be uh, flying on Wednesday, so there'll be no stream. I'll be at the conference on Thursday, and then we'll see about Friday. It depends on the hotel internet on Friday. Yeah. And then I'll be traveling home on Saturday. Awesome. Awesome. We can't wait to hear what you think about Destiny and telling us how hyped we should be and you know how many of our money we should be throwing at the screen. <laughs> I'll take all the money, throw it all at the screen. <laughs> what the viewers got can't see is money ready to go. Those are hundred dollar bills. Briar is a very wealthy man. Ooh, um, rich. For people who've stuck around this long as well, just to let you know for the future, there is an audio version of BC Thought Show available on Podbean and iTunes. Uh, links will be in the video description on YouTube, and they may well be posted into the chat now if anyone has them available. Um, also, guys, don't know your movements, Briar, but will you be around town for the show next week? For I will definitely be to... here for the show next week. Yeah. Awesome. There will so... be a regular scheduled show next week um, where we will... Um, Make fun of Beastly. Uh, Gary will drink tea. And Robbie will apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that Fantastic. typically happens. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone, for staying on this long. We've run extra long this time. It's been Two hour show, man. We went through everything. Getting longer and longer. We started an hour, moved to 90, and now we've hit the two. I think we've peaked. It was it. absolutely incredible that we went through everything from E3, Sony, Microsoft, EA, Bethesda. We basically covered it all. Just wanted to say thank you so much for sticking with all of us. Um, it was fun just to talk about just crazy speculation, really. You know, I had sort of an order in my head to wanted to go through things, but I'm glad we kind of just went all out crazy, you know, just kind of random. It was fun, but we got Kind of random. We went through the list that you gave us. <laughs> I guess I didn't even really have an order for the list. I just had everything written down. I'm like, okay, we'll just kind of do it as we see fit. <laughs> Everyone just got mad at me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, this is what I planned anyways. Uh, I, look forward to it. I look forward to it. When we release the, awesome. uh, the Blu-ray of this episode with all the deleted scenes where we just <laughs> abuse Robbie behind the uh, scenes for 10 That's minutes. That's the stuff that we keep in. That's the good stuff. That's the... <laughs> That's what gets the clicks, you know? Awesome. All right. Thank you guys, everybody, for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great day, guys. Take care.